night. You were a right good night. Mine's your eye new straight from off. As soon as I put my new slinky jersey frock on, I thought it's going to be one of them nights when everything just fell out my road. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of them. Well, it's your own fault if you don't. You have to make your own chances in this world. So where did you go, then? Well, we started off in this cocktail bar. You never went to no cocktail bar. Are you trying to tell me where I went? Is she trying to tell me where I went? She goes to cocktail bars like I'll be going to Prince Charles's wedding. Look, leave me out of this. I'm just here to slice the bacon. It was a cocktail bar in a pub. Oh. Mm. A very posh pub. Hey, you said to me, uh, what are you having, darling? I said, I'll have a, a double snowball and give us a go, then pickled gherkins. <laughs> very sophisticated, like a can be. Hey, but it right changed, dead classy. No, oh, that must have been a change for you. Uh, so, where did you go after that, then? Well, then we went to this pub. Hey, it was good. The, the, a comedian there. What? Blow? But he had to laugh. At one point, he gets women up with him. Well, they're egging me on. I was dying to get up. But by that time, I'd had that much champagne. Oh, I was frightened of falling off flipping stage into some poor beggar's chicken and chips. Champagne? <laughs> Well, it was champagne, sort of a champagne. Hey, but it was lovely. Must have had three bottles. And then I finished off with a large brandy. Blimey, what was the occasion? No, we just fancied a right good night out, you know. Has he robbed a bank or what? Oh. You're Jack. Sounds as if he was pushing the boat out a bit. Yeah. If one single word of that story you've just told us is true. Every syllable's true. Listen, I've got the hangover to prove it. And he road. Who oh, says I went with our Jack? No, all right, then. Why don't you go and see the doctor? I mean, he's got a surgery tonight, hasn't he? What for? I'm not poorly. No, but if you're not sleeping... Well, so he'll give me pills, won't he? I don't want to get hooked on pills, thank you very much. Hey, he might just give you a tonic, my sweet. Bert, I know the only tonic I need, and it's nothing the doctor can give me. In any case, you don't just pop in these days, do you? You've got to make appointments weeks ahead. You won't. That's Irish for a start. How do you know you're going to be poorly weeks ahead? Oh, all right then, clever. You know very well what I mean. <laughs> if only our Brian and Gail would get themselves sorted out, well, then I'd sleep nights. Ivy, I know it's hard, but Brian and Gail are grown up and they are married. So stop flipping mithering. They've to sort their own problems out, right? And you're going to tell me that you're not worried about them? What, having to struggle all the time? There's our Brian there. He's, he's working every day and most at nights just to make ends meet. <sighs> Crikey, Gail and that babby hardly ever see him. Oh, come on, it's not as bad as that. Of course it's as bad as that, Bert. What? Is that any way for him to be living? Right at the start of their married life. Crikey, but I have rights they should be happy married little family, shouldn't they? Everything to look forward to. I don't know. What is right, Ivy? I mean, who's got it right? They certainly haven't got it right. We've not got it right. I wouldn't mind if there's anything we could do to help, you know. Right, Lizzie Dripping, your official escort's arrived. Get your card in. Hey, don't worry, kid. I'll see she gets to work safe. I'll see she's not attacked by half a dozen big randy blokes. <laughs> Mind you, I'll swallow a spoil sport me. Well, if that one hadn't a burp, I thought I'd walked into the mortuary. What's up with you both, any road? No, come on, let's get going. What's happened to that smiley bird I'd come to know and love? Hey, tell you what, why don't four of us go out tonight, have a few jars and a few laughs there? No, tell her. Oh, go on, I won't spend much. Ain't it won't do him any harm. I'd have stuck his wife out for him, that flaming Jack. I thought you went out uptown last night. I did. But that one more of an end party, wasn't it, you know? No, sorry, love. Perhaps another night, all right. Oh, sorry. Listen, for all you know, tomorrow you could be run over by a UFO. A what? UFO. Unidentified flying objects. Then things that Mike Baldwin will be chucking at us if we don't get his bodies across road. Come on, Superman. Oh, come on, then, bossy boots. It's all right, kid. Who is it? It's me, I see. Can I come in? Yes, you can come in. Why not? I just bumped into Sedgwick. He's doing his nut. You not turning in again. Good God. Oh, it's nothing to what it was. Who the hell's done this, look? Burglars? No, nothing was taken. What, vandals? Bloody kids? No, it was Smashing things up it for the sake of it. wasn't kids, Len. I'll, I'll get you a cup of tea. No, no, don't. No, no, I'll do that. You sit down. You look as if you haven't slept all night. I haven't. I just sat here all night looking at it. All night? Where, where, when was all this done? I found it when I came home. Good God. What did the police say? Oh, I haven't sent for them. Well, you should in argue. No, Len, don't. I don't want them fetching. You've got to. 
You can't let whoever did this get away with it. Is there any more? Yeah, upstairs. All my clothes, suits, coats, undies. If you know any old ladies that like stuffing cushions, you better tell them to come and help themselves. Hey, listen. I want the truth. None of your jokes. I'm not much in the mood for jokes, Len. I know. You know about this, don't you? You know, don't you? Yeah. Well? Oh, what's the point? The point is, whoever's done this, I'll go round there and smash his bloody head in, that's why. It was a woman, Len. A woman? Well, who, for God's sake? Oh, never mind. What are you talking about? Never mind. Who was it? Well, you... You know, the other night when I, I went out with Bet, well, uh... I met this fella and uh, we had a few drinks and... Oh, what am I talking about? I had more than a few drinks. He finished up here. Well, it's happened to all of us, hasn't it? No, not like this. This one was a real beaut. Oh, come on, don't crucify yourself. It was just... I know what it was just, Len. We've all done silly things in our time. Oh. Especially with a bit of bevy inside us. This was rock bottom, even for me. And now, this. His wife. Oh, yeah. She sent me a message. A charming little note it was. You're not going to let her get away with it, are you? I mean, she must be a raving lunatic. Oh, leave it, Len. Will you just let it go? I'm at the end of my tether. I can't stand any more. I don't want any more aggro, any more rows, any more hurt. I, I just want to get this lot cleared up and... Uh, I want a bit of peace and quiet, that's all. Just a bit of peace and quiet. Hey, what a great idea for your honeymoon. I've got a few great ideas of my own for my honeymoon, mate. Freddie, please. No, I mean, wait. Well, go. Go on, I'll buy it. London. Eh? You thought I was going to say something daft, didn't you? Or rude, or both. Uh, well, we were thinking of going to Ralph, but I don't know. What do you think, Freddie? London? You could get him to show you the crown jewels. Now who's being rude? <laughs> no, the only thing is, you'd have to bring the wedding forward, do we? And then you could hire this minibus where I can get your dead sheep, and then you drive down the M1, drop me and the lads off at Wembley, and then you and your lovely bride are free to toodle off and do your own thing. Yeah, brilliant. Show for him and his mates down to the cup final between City and Spurs. Well, how's that crappy? Is a perfect honeymoon, Frederick. It doesn't. Oh, I think we'll <laughs> stick to Welsh Wales, eh, Freddie? Yeah, look, we'll save London till we get our own boozer. We can do it in style. Um, I don't like a lovesick school kid. Oh, what's wrong with it? Well, it's his age. It's not decent. There's no age limit to people falling in love, Uncle Albert. You know what I mean. Friendship, companionship, sharing. You really believe that's only for kids? <laughs> that nobody else is entitled to it? Is that what you're saying? Did you go to Elsie's? And? What did you find out what's up? She's not been in work again today, and Sedgwick's doing his not. It's driving me potty. <coughs> Why is it bothering you? Because Mavis goes in the cafe for a cream bun and happens to ask where Elsie is. She gets such a mouthful off Sedgwick, she's been nothing but a nervous wreck on legs ever since. I mean, oh, Peter, I mean, when he opened his mouth. Hey. Has Elsie not turned in again, then? Uh, no, she's... Uh, she's had a bit of trouble. Well, what now? Nor another fella. Look, um, let's leave it, eh? I mean, it, it's her business, isn't it? But we are her mates. Somebody broke into her place last night. Smashed everything up, ripped everything to pieces. Look, he's all a bit sick. I, sh I shouldn't be telling you. Poor Elsie. Has she have the police? She won't. Well, she must. Listen, I'll go round and tell her to stop no. being so pig-headed. No, don't. No, I offered to help, but she said she didn't want anybody. She just wants oh. to be by herself. Well, you're a fella. She'd probably be glad of a woman to talk to. Yeah, well, Bet can go round, can't it? Yeah, sure, love. Uh, I'll nip round as soon as we've shot here. I could go now. You think I'm just going nosy and don't you? I didn't say that, did I? You don't have to. Look, Elsie's got a bit of trouble, real trouble. And she doesn't want you making a song and dance about it. Bet said she's going round there. Let's leave it at that, eh? <coughs> You know what I wouldn't mind doing? Well, if it's eloping with Robert Redford, just make sure I've got a clean shirt for tomorrow, all right? As if I wouldn't. Clever. No, it's Eddie. Eddie Yates. He's got this uh, little pal who's got a minivan. He's talking about going down to a cup final on Saturday. Cup final? Since when have you been interested in cup final? That is, assuming you could get a ticket like... Don't talk so daft. 
I just thought that if he could squeeze another couple in, we could go and have a day out. I mean, there's a few of them going to shed out. It won't cost much. Not cost much? London? Are you joking? You could spend a fortune in London. We don't have to. Make a few sandwiches, can't I? Oh, Bert, we could go and see Palace and River and Westminster Abbey, have a little picnic in Hyde Park, then go and have a look around the shops. What do you think? Well... Make a change, won't it, love? Probably won't have enough room in van, though. Yeah, you can always ask him. You can always say no, can't you? No, even so, it's still going to cost a few quid, isn't it? I mean, we've got to be practical, love, haven't we? I'm sick of being practical, Bert. I'm sick of sitting here wondering and worrying. We can't just moulder away, love, can we? No, I know, love. Hey, I'll tell you what, my sweet. I'll make a deal with you. If I ask Eddie if we can get a lift in that mucky van of his, will you promise me you'll phone the Queen and tell her we'll call him for afternoon tea? Will you tell me something? What? How did a sensible woman like me come to be married to a blooming daft lump like you? <laughs> Aren't you ready yet? Eh? Hey? No, I'm not. I don't know. You're always rushing me these days. Come on, sit down. We've got time to have a cup of tea before we go. Have you had your dinner? Yeah, but I couldn't wait to get out of the house. Away from his miserable mug. Oh, what you said to him now? Me, no. Only how I fancied going out tonight, like I said earlier. This and Bert's told you, Vera, we're not going. I know. I said to him, how about you taking me out for a change? But oh, no. He'd rather go boozing with his mates. Oh, come on. You were out last night, weren't you? I know, and I fancied going out again tonight and all. I'm not sitting there on my tod, so I've told him. If he don't set me out, I'm going out with you. I am stopping in with Bert, Vera. I know. You're my alibi, aren't you? I can hardly tell him I'm going out with Harry, can I? Harry? Harry? Who the hell's Harry? The latest admirer. One I went out with last night. He treats me like a woman. Well, I can trust you, Bert, can't I? You'll be in a man at world. I mean, you can't blame a girl for wanting a bit of excitement in her life, can you? While she's still young enough to enjoy it. <laughs> Len told me. I wish he hadn't. Well, he didn't broadcast it. I think he thought you might just want somebody to talk to. What about? Look, if you want me to go, I'll go. Oh, go or stay. Makes no difference. Nothing does. That's not you talking. Me? Who's me? Elsie Town, that gutsy woman who didn't give a damn for nothing or nobody. I don't think she ever existed. I think she's just a figment of everybody's imagination, including mine. What about me, eh? Don't you think I look in the mirror plenty of days and know that there's no flipping connection between the face that the whole world sees and what's really me inside? But you've got to go on, Cock. The show must go on. Oh, don't talk rubbish, Bet. Go on for what? Battling with life? Nobody's going to open those golden gates for us. Nobody's going to show us what's so fabulous on the other side. We'd better get used to the idea. I have. Have you had out to eat all day? About six aspirins and 40 cigarettes. So, now I've gone to the bother of coming round here when I could have been at home putting my aching feet up. Are going to tell me what happened? Fielding. Bill Fielding? Oh, Elsie, I warned you he'd be trouble, didn't I? Yes, you warned me, and yes, I let him come round here. Have you always listened to good advice? So what happened? What's all this got to do with him? Well, it's his wife found out. She came round and she wrecked the place. All my personal stuff as well. She made a very thorough job of it. Are you sure it were her? Oh, yes. She left me a note. Oh, where is it? I burnt it. I don't get it. I mean, Bill Fielding's a right dead leg. Everybody knows that, so she must have. It weren't like he were a plaster saint that suddenly fell off a pedestal. Why should she suddenly go berserk like that? I think she must have thought that we were having it up for ages. Oh, we don't know what she has to put up with, do we? Frankly, I don't care. I just want to forget the pair of them. I want to forget the old rotten, sordid, lousy mess. But I haven't got much hope of that, have I? And just let her get away with it? She has got away with it. Oh, Elsie, this is stupid. Is it right you'll not fetch the police in? And tell them the old sordid story. Well, they're used to it. It won't mean out to them. Well, I'm not. They may be used to it, oh, but Elsie, I... Oh, I didn't mean... Bet, look. I'm finished. I'm... I'm sick with disgust at myself. So sick I feel like screaming. The only reason I don't scream is that I feel I'll never stop. Oh, I've hated myself before. But never as bad as this. I look in the mirror and I think, I don't know that face and I don't want to know it either. 
but I've got to live with it, haven't I? Do you honestly want me to sit down and tell the whole sordid story to some cold-eyed, hard, young copper? Do you know what it'd be like for me? It'd be like doing my own bloody post-mortem. Hey, well, there's certainly plenty of choice. Oh, which one do you like? Have you decided? Well, I, I thought something engraved would be nice. I had a plain gold band last time and I never really liked it. Oh. But his mum wanted me to have it because it had been her mother's, but it always made me feel a bit creepy. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I wanted a new one. Well, you should have spoken up. Oh, I was young and daft in those days. Hey, that's nice. That one with the facets there, can you see? Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Don't you like it? Well... What about that one there? There's a bit more to it. Oh, a bit more solid looking, you mean? Well, I mean, it looks like a wedding ring, doesn't it? The other's more your costume jewellery, you know. Well, I mean, it's only my opinion, love. I mean, you have what you want. It's you that's wearing it, isn't it? I'm smiling for choice. Well, are we going in or what? Or do you want to save a few, Bob, and live over the brush? Well, there's a lot doing it these days. It's, it's the in thing, isn't it? <laughs> not for me, it's not. Anyway, I'm an old-fashioned girl. Come on. <laughs> I wonder what kind of a wedding ring Lady Di will have. Well, wherever it is, it'll cost a bob or two more than what Frogface must have paid. Hey, it weren't cheap, I'll tell you that. It weren't cheap. It's a pity you didn't see me about that, you know. I've got a mate in that line. Oh, give over, Yates. We went to a proper jeweller. He is a proper jeweller. Just doesn't have no sprawny shop. Has this little brown suitcase, you know. Aye. You were quite right to go to a reputable establishment. Good jewellery is an investment, quite apart from anything else. That's what I keep telling all the fellas. And all I've got so far is a pair of diamond earrings from Southport Fun Fair and a gold-plated bangle what turns me arm green. <laughs> but at least if anybody falls for me, I'll know it's not my money they're after. In your heady. As I remember at Bert's, I had a word with you about Saturday. What about it? Well, if we were going to ask if there's room in that little minivan, you know, we thought we might go down to London and have a day out with you. Ah, well, there's been a slight snag there. You oh. see, Lou was ready to lend us the van, but uh, there's a slight technical itch, owing to the fact that the uh, MOT's run out and the tax is four months overdue. Oh. So he's not very organised, Lou. Shame. Still, I don't suppose we'll have really gone any road. Is he Walker? Uh, no chance of borrowing the Rover on Saturday, is there? No, dear. No chance. Yeah, I thought you might say that. Kenneth, you've got a motor. I need a kind-hearted bloke who'd do a pal a favour if he could, right? I like to think so, yes. Great. But not on this occasion. I've got a licence, you know, and it's spotlessly clean. That sort of counter you never get chance to drive now, you see. <laughs> yeah, true. He can't lend it to you because it's off the blooming road again. Yes, I was going to mention that, Uncle Albert. I knew he might be doing a good favour by not lending it to you. Because nobody is the right man will be seen dead in a jerry car. <laughs> Never mind, Cork, you'll have to go on train with rest at your bowls. Oh, well, no. oh, let's have a look at your ring then. Oh, no, nobody sees it till it's on my finger. It's bad luck. Ah. It's when it's on your finger, it's bad luck. <laughs> hey, uh, Alf, have you thought any more about what we, what we said? What? Well, you know, about you being best man like. Of course he'd be best man, won't you? He knows the perks. Best man gets to be first to kiss the bride. <laughs> well, uh, go on then, I suppose I can. He's <laughs> underwhelmed with enthusiasm, isn't that right, Al? Yes, I am. I'd be glad to, mate. What are you doing here? Thought you'd gone on a date. Well, I've just come to tell you, Jack starts checking up, not very well. We've got to bingo together. And what happens if I'm still sat here when he comes? Oh, I've told you they won't. He's going out with his mates. It's just in case. Vera, I think you're potty. You're asking for trouble. Oh, listen, I'm having a bit of fun, kid. Where's Harmony? He gives me none. I'll stop looking so frosty face and tell me what you're having. I've just time for one before I meet Harry at Crown and Kettle. Yeah. Crown and Kettle? Derby Street? Oh, I don't know. I've never been myself. It's uh, this friend I'm going with. He's a big pal at New Landlord there. Oh, I think you've got it wrong, love. The landlord there's just moving out. Fred and I know that for a fact, don't we, love? That's, uh, that's the pub we're up for. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't. No, Harry, this friend I'm going with. Well, it's the bloke in you in Army. He's been running up on Mount Glossop way, but they want to be near a town, you know. Well, they only moved in at weekend. That's why we're going tonight, to have a little celebration drink with him. <laughs> Looks like you're going to have to find somewhere else, don't it, Fred? <laughs> Go on, you better get off up to bed. Right, I want to be first in that job centre queue in the morning. Right, I'll just wash these up, love, and I'll be up. All right. I'll tell you what, hope this does give you a good night's sleep, and it's like Advert says, otherwise I'll sue him for false pretenses. <laughs> See you in a bit, love. All right, love.
Who is it? It's me. Up in you, yeah, cock. What the hell are you doing here? Do you know what time it is? I oh, it's playtime. Workers playtime. Well, it is for this flipping worker, any row. Hey, shush, keep your voice down, will you? How much have you had to drink, you? Plenty. Hey, he's a very generous fella, is Harry. Not like that stingy, miserable... Jack? Yeah, Jack. That's his name. Do you know it's slipping out for a minute? Wish it'd slip it permanent. Right, where's your spare bed, then? Hold on a minute, you. Get your body round here, you. Drop that down. Yeah. Tell me what the hell's up with you. Oh, not a lot, kid. It's found out about me and Harry. It's kicked me out. Hey, listen, I can only sleep with one pillow. I never sleep with two. You're not even upset, are you? Oh, why should I be? He's no loss. Listen, I'm better off without him. If he hadn't kicked me out, I'd have walked out any road. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Then you just think you can come round here and calmly demand a bed, then? Oh, listen, Cock, you're not going to chuck me out on all, are you? It's that cold out now. Wait just a minute, you. What about this fabulous area of yours? Why didn't you go away in? He had a lot, nothing better, Petal. But I don't think his wife would have been too keen. Well, you can't have our spare bed, can you? We haven't got one to get it to our Brian and Gail when they moved. Oh, that's all right. Look, I can dust down there. It's comfy. I ain't kept anywhere, me. Oh, stop looking at me like that. I've been all bothered. Listen, you know what we want now? I'm living here. Scout's on it. Living here? You can forget that, lady. Oh, listen. Yeah, I'm a best mate, aren't you? I mean, I do the same for you, won't I? And Bert won't mind. He's a good sort, Bert. Not like that miserable prune of mine. Vera, it's not on. Look, you got yourself in this mess. You wouldn't listen to me, would you? I know, you keep reminding me. Shut up, will you? Oh, crikey. Me think. Look, I'll tell you what. You can kick down there just for one night. But there's no question of your living here. None at all, all right? Oh, Thanks, Cock. Listen, you feel a lot better about it tomorrow. Mm. Listen, what are friends for? I don't say them for you, won't I? I'll tell you what, I'll make a cup of tea. I think I'll make a bit of toast and all while I'm at it. I'm starving. Is it funny when you've had a drink, you always feel dead hungry? Do you want a bit? No. No, I don't, thank you very much. Bloody Nora! I take it that's French for good morning. Hey, what the hell are you doing here? Well, I walk having a kit till you barged in. Uh, I said you could stop, love. You what? Well, nobody said out to me. Well, you were asleep, weren't you? Asleep? What? You mean she sloped in here last night? Yeah, you'd just gone upstairs. But I'd nowhere else to go, Bert. Hey, you, get yourself covered up. What are you talking about, nowhere else to go? You've got home to go to, haven't you? Ah, well, that's just where you're wrong, isn't it? Huh? But uh, Jack won't let him, would he? No. Slam flaming door in my face. Oh, well, he must have had a good reason then. Yeah, he had. He don't exactly approve of company she's been keeping. Well, I'm not surprised. Some fancy man, I suppose, is it? Well, everybody's in charge of the friends. Harry just happens to be one of them, that's oh, all. Yes, he's a very good one and all. By heck. You can't half pick your mates, you can, can't you? All right, then. Don't just stand there with your mouth open. If you're stopping, you can make yourself useful. You can put the kettle on. Oh, your wish is my commando master. Get off! Hey, that's enough of that, I know. Uh, just hold on a minute, you. You go and put kettle on. Oh, it's all right, kid. I'm up now, I'll Oh, no, it. you're not. You get dressed. More tea, Mrs Walker? Fred? No. No what? No more tea. You know, Fred, I reckon with just a little more effort, it wouldn't be beyond you to have the manners of a pig. Oh, I wish you'd stop your rabbiting. You've been rabbiting since the minute you came in here. I can feel the blinking draft from it. Well, I'm only trying to brighten up the morning with my sparkling conversation. Mm. If you ask me, Summit needs to. You do look a bit peaky, actually, Fred. Not sickening for anything, are you? No, I'm not sickening for that, Mrs Walker. That means he's not going to get any better, Mrs Walker. Well, there's a fat lot to be chirpy about, is there? You mean the crown and kettle? Well, exactly. Oh, you're not still fretting about that, are you? There'll be other houses, Fred. I know there will, Mrs Walker, but, but when? I mean, well, the point is we're getting wed in, well, a week. Well, if you're worrying about that, you can stop being bothered on that score. Now, you know, you're very welcome to stay here until something turns up. I know that, Mrs Walker, and, well, I do appreciate it, but it's no way to start a marriage, is it, when out in prospect, and that's what it is. Unless the brewery get the fingers out and get some it sorted out. I'll see to the cellar, anyway. He's taking it hard, isn't he? You know what I reckon, don't you? What? 
I reckon he's thinking if he doesn't get some done up and dusted by this time next week, his wedding's up the swanning. Oh, surely not. Well, she did only say yes after he said he was going to get his own place, didn't you? But surely, dear, you don't think that the whole relationship is based solely on that? Well, whatever I think makes no odds. It's what Freddie thinks. And whichever way you look at it, he's definitely not very happy. Now you've made me feel awful. You, Mrs Walker? Well, I did ask the brewery to give me time to get a new potman, didn't I? Well, I don't see what you've got to blame yourself for. If Fred and his fairy queen can't sort this out, they might as well call it a day right now. I suppose you're right. Morning. Morning, Elder. Mrs Walker. Morning, Mrs Elder. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd make a start in here if it's all right with you. Perfectly. Just slipping upstairs, dear. Right, Mrs Walker. Hey, don't suppose you could squeeze another cup, then? Bye, Herr Kilda. I don't know how you do it. You must be telepathic or summit. <laughs> you can. No, I can't. Oh. Well, here, hang on. I want a word. With me? Yeah. Have you seen Nancy Tanner lately? What about her? They're somewhat up, isn't they? Is there? Well, when did you last see her? Yesterday, as it happens. Oh. You must be the only one what has. I've not seen Ard nor her of her for days. And that Wally fella seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. Yesterday, you said? Yeah. She had a bit of headache, migraine or something. Yeah, well, I know she wasn't in work. Cos Stan went in there for his dinner and he said that girl were rushed off her feet, calling Elsa Tanner something rotten. Migraine, you said? Something like that. Lasts well, a couple of days then, does it? Cos she's not been in today, neither. I've heard her knocking about. Well, I reckon there's better ways of getting back on your feet than slaving your guts out over a ton and a half of sausage and chips. Don't you, Hilda? Now, if you've nought to do, I have. Are you decent? You must be joking. You look a damn sight better than the last time I saw you. That's not saying much, is it? I thought I'd better come round and see how you're doing. Oh, I'm not done away with myself if that's what you're thinking. No, I wasn't. I thought I'd cross my mind. You're joking? No, not. When I came back here and I saw all this mess, I wonder what I was on this earth for. I'd no idea. Oh, don't worry thought about it and realised whatever it is, I'm stuck with it. I haven't got the guts for our tales. Oh, yes, you have. Well, you're not the L.C. Tanner I've known and loved all these years. The worst part about it is the more I think about it, the more I realise I've only myself to blame. Still, it's nice of you to come round. It's nice to know that somebody still cares. Of course I do. I always did, you know that. Yeah, I know. How do you get on with the insurance? Oh, yeah. I phoned them up. Yeah, what'd they say? Well, they said if I didn't contact the police, it would jeopardise my claim, and we all know what that means, don't we? In that case, you've got no choice. You've got to go and talk to them. No way. No, no, come on. You can't afford to lose 200 quid's worth of gear. I'm not taking that chance, Len. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. Can you not see the headlines? Jealous wife takes revenge after a night of love. Oh, they'd love that in the Rovers, wouldn't it? They'll have a field day. I might not come to that. Well, I'm not taking that chance. So what are you going to do? Let her get away with it? Oh, Lose 200 quid's worth of gear? No, all I want to do, Len, is to get back to work and pick up the pieces. It's not going to be easy, but it's the only chance I've got. I don't want to rush you, Albert, but I'm expecting the girls over from the factory on the balm cake rush. You could be here till tea time, you know. Look, if you haven't time to serve me, just say so. I didn't say that. All right, then. Hello. Hi. Oh, hello. Uh, can you let me have a pint of milk, please? I left a short this morning. Ah, of course. Help yourself, will you? Hey, how are you first? Have you decided what you want yet? No, I haven't. Well, when you have, I'll serve you. What's up with him today? Oh, I think he's at a funny age. Oh, aren't we all? Well, you speak for yourself. Ah, you have had a bit of a gleam in your eye, haven't you? It's ever since you came back from Glasgow. I reckon that holiday did you good, the pair of you. Yeah, yeah, I think it did. Anyway, thanks for the milk, Al. Good seeing you, Uncle Albert. Yeah. What do you reckon, then? What about? About your Ken and Deirdre. Oh, what about them? Well, I don't know, don't I? With all this talk about weddings flying about, you're bound to wonder, aren't you? Oh, how should I know? Well, you'd be the first to know, wouldn't you? Well, that's just where you're wrong, isn't it? I'll have a small brown loaf. And make sure it's the days. Look, are you sure you wouldn't rather go to Rovers we are the girls? Oh, listen, I see enough of them at work. Have you see enough of me at work? I know, but you are my mate. Hey, listen, I'll put kettle on. <sighs> 
Oh, hello, love. Well, that's well timed. Oh, no, love, I'm sorry. I thought I'd have it ready, but you might know a cure mile long down pavement. Well, never mind. Take your coat off. Uh, Vera's just print kettle on. Vera? Yeah, she's, uh, she's just going to come and have a bit of something weird. But, what have I, I've only got enough for two, love. Oh, don't worry, love, we'll manage. I'm not hungry anyway. Well, it's as well, isn't it? I mean, she's got appetite like a cart horse, Shh. that one. Bert, I'm sorry. I tried to put her up, but you know what she's like. Right, well, we get better get them put out. I want mine while they're still warm. Right, hey, listen, I put kettle on and I put a, another plate on the grill. Uh, I think it, we are having plates. Of course we're having plates. You're not at home now, you know. Could have filled me. How did she seem to you? She'll survive. I wish I could be so sure. No, she will, you know. If there's one thing Elsie Tanner is, it's a survivor. Everybody has a breaking point, you know, Len. Even Elsie Tanner. She'll be all right, I'm telling you. How'd she go on with insurance? Well, she hasn't, does she? She hasn't. She hasn't put a claim in. She reckons there's no point. She doesn't think they're going to pay out unless she goes to the police. Did I hear someone mention the police? Yeah, that's right, Annie, look. Oh, dear, something happened then. <laughs> yes, but it's nothing for you to worry about. Uh, it's Elsie, Mrs Walker. She's had a bit of trouble at, at home, like. Elsie Tanner has? I knew it. Now, what did I tell you? With vandals. I tried to tell her I'd heard something, you know, but would she listen? Um, vandals? <laughs> yes, they, uh, they got in while she was at work and chucked her stuff about. It's her clothes, mainly. They've ripped them to shreds. Isn't that right, Len? That's right, I haven't seen any police activity. No, you wouldn't. Uh, that's what we were just saying, that she's not bothering to tell them. But she must tell them it's a criminal offence. Yes, but she reckons that she asked for it, doesn't she? Asked for it? Well, you see, she went to work and left the back door open. Well, it's funny, I never noticed, didn't it? Well, you must be slipping then, Hilda. Right, then? Cheers, bud. I don't care how it happened. I feel she really must tell the police, for all our sakes. Uh, could I have a word in your ear? Okay. What is it? Good? Look, forget the vandals. Forget them? I'll tell you everything that happened later, because I know it won't go no further. You mean there weren't any vandals, I mean? As far as Hilda Ogden's concerned, there was. Mm, very well. Look, dear, is there anything I can do to help? I don't think there's anything anybody can do, Mrs Walker. Well, by heck and me living next door and all. You just don't know the half of it, do you? You never said a true word, Hilda. Hello, Bubbles. I didn't expect you till later. No, I know. Um, can I have a word with you if you've got a minute? <laughs> Drop a word with me any time, you know, that. Look, I've had an awful night, honest I have. I haven't slept a wink. I just wonder whether we're doing the right thing. I mean, the wedding and that. What for? Well, I just wonder whether we oughtn't to wait a bit. I mean, with the crown and kettle falling through, it's put a different light on things, hasn't it? Well, there'll, there'll be another place crop up, love. No, Fred. How long do we have to wait? What's more to the point, how long do we have to stop here with Mrs Walker? I don't want to start my married life here, not knowing when I'm going to move out. That's why I think we should wait until we know something a bit more definite. Well, look, I'll, I'll give them a ring this afternoon. They'll probably have another place already lined up for us. I mean, well, I, I mean, there's no point in going on until we know the score, is there, love? suppose not, but I'd just feel happier if I knew there was something else lined up. I, I would, honestly. Yeah. Hello, love. I didn't expect to see you. Uh, well, I'm not stopping. I've got a message for you. Well, Elsie Tanner more like, but I thought it might be better coming from you. What's the message? It's from her boss, Sedgwick. Mavis went in to borrow some milk this morning, and he was furious. She's not turned in again. Well, I'll just get her to ring him, eh? She's definitely going in tomorrow. She's not, you know. He asked Mavis to give her this. What is it? It's a notice. He's finishing it. Oh, my God. That's all she needs, isn't it? You don't have to keep your head down, you know. Oh, no. I bet they're having a field day in the row's return. You've not had so much excitement since the Silver Jubilee. No, nah, they don't know anything. Not the truth, anyway. Annie does, but it won't go any further than her. If anyone asks, you had trouble with vandals. Vandals? Yes, you left your door open on the way to work one morning, all right. Thanks, Len. Oh, don't thank me. It was Beth's idea. I can't tell you. It's funny, the times that thought's haunted me on the way home. Anyway, 
How do you think it looks? Any different? If you say no, I'll throttle you. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Oh, well. If I was then back to work tomorrow, I may as well try and make the place look like home. That's what I'm here for, Elsie. Eh? You haven't got a job to go to. What? It's Sedgwick. He's sent you... your notice. He's finished you. He's finished me? Finished me without a flaming word? He couldn't, could he? Your phone's been off the hook. He really has finished me now, hasn't he? Well, I had a proper job to go, there was something I... Oh, this is the limit, Len. That's the flaming limit. Come on, I mean, you must know what houses are coming available. Well, if you don't flip in, put me in touch with somebody that does know. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, mate. I didn't want to blow me top. It's just that, well, it's very important to me, is this. Look, I, look, I were told I'd be considered for one of your houses. And, well, I'm just wanting to know if one's going to, you know, be available within the next few weeks, that's all. All right. The, sh the shipwright's arms. Well, that's down at the bottom of Dock Road. That's an old alehouse, that. Oh. Oh, well, uh, well, uh, as long as something's coming up. Yeah, oh, right, I know then. Tell her, see you. Hello? Linda? Hello, love, it's me. Your mother. No, no trouble, I just thought, uh, well, I just thought I'd come over and see you. Well, I've got a couple of days' holiday coming up, and I thought... No, no trouble at all. Why? I... Well, I was... Uh... I was thinking I might come over tonight. Oh, good. Well, great. I'll be seeing you then, love. Love to everybody. Bye. Oh, hello, love. Hello, Freddie. That said it was all right for me to come through. Yeah, of course it is. Park yourself. I'll make a pot of tea in a minute. It's just that I've, uh, I've got something to tell you. Yeah. You know what we were talking about uh, at dinner there? Yeah. Well, you rang the brewery then? Yeah. Uh, I rang them straight after dinner and, uh, well, they didn't say too much until they knew it was me that were talking like, you know. But, but what did they say? Well, as I say, like, they didn't sort of say too much. But as soon as I mentioned the domestic arrangements, like... We'll probably be someone, love. There's another house come available. Well, did they say where it was? Well, no. Only, uh, well, the important thing is that we can go on with the wedding, can't we? Well, yes. You know, I, I'm very lucky, Eunice, having somebody like you. So practical. There's many of them there that'd stop at now to get at that altar. <laughs> now. Matilda? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Well, I can't stop now. Oh, we're uh, going away, are you? Aye, I'm off to see our Linda. See you. Hang on a sec. I just wanted a quick word. Well, I've got a train to catch. Yeah, I know. It's just that, uh, well, I heard about your bit of trouble, like. Oh, aye. And what did you hear? Well, you know, about them vandals what got in and how they'd done for some of your clothes, like. And, well, I just wanted to say I was sorry. Thanks very much, Eva. And uh, I wondered if you could use these. Well, what are they? Well, it's not much. I mean, I haven't got much. It's just a, a blouse and a jumper. I thought they might come in handy. Look, Hilda, it's very good of you, but... It's the least I can do, isn't it? I mean, if I can't help you in your hour of need, who can? Child. Tell very much. I think nothing of it. Happen you'd do the same for me if the need arose. Yeah, happen I would. Well... See you. Yeah, I won't keep you. Uh, you're Linda, she said. Yeah. Uh, do you want anything getting in for when you come back? I don't think so, Hilda. To tell you the truth, I don't know when I will be back. See you. Ta-ra. Yeah, ta-ra. Have a nice time. Oh, 
Hello, love. Oh. Oh, hello, love. I thought you'd been at Rover's. No, I thought I'd give it a miss tonight. Hey, do you know what I've been looking forward to more than anything all day? What? A nice, quiet evening in watching the yeah, telly with birds. you. Yeah, but Ah, come on, Harvey, shift yourself. Oh, do you want me to come in down the chimney? Hells, bells, I don't believe it. I'm sorry, love, what can I do? Hello, Gannett. I don't suppose you'll be happy till you've eaten us out of house and home, will you? Hey, I could be happy with you anywhere, Bert. And that's <laughs> enough of that. Shan't tell you again, lady. While you're stopping here, you behave yourself. Stopping here? Again? Well, I can't just chuck her out on streets, can I? She is my best mate. Well, she's got home to go to, hasn't she? Oh, you must be joking. Oh, I am. I am, love. I'm falling about. Look, the tears are rolling down my cheeks. Can't you see them? Look, Vera, why yeah. don't you... Uh, I tell you what, why don't you stop here and have a bit of tea with us tonight and uh, then ring your Jack? I'm going to come round by now. I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if he ain't out of his mind with worry. Oh, he'll be out of his mind, all right, with flaming brown ale. Well, what about this fancy man of yours? What's his name? Can't he do something? Oh, hey, he does. Bert, you're not suggesting she moves in with him? Certainly not, my sweet. I'm suggesting that she moves out of here. Ah, but there could be a little problem there. Problem? What problem? Well, I don't think his wife is be so keen, do you? Oh, cracky, Vera. You can't half pick him, you. Look, Harry gives me a good time. Not like flaming Jack. All he cares about is his bulls and his GGs. I could have more fun in a crematorium waiting room than I do with him. Vera? One of you's going to have to make a move sooner or later. Yes, and from where I'm standing, sunshine, the sooner the better. The free phone is over there. I think you've got it wrong, Bert. It's not up to me to make first move. Are you joking? It was you that went off with somebody else, wasn't it? Yeah, but it were him that chucked me out. He should be round here crawling on his hands and knees to get me back. I don't believe it, women. You see, this could take days. Oh, shut up and stop looking on the dark side. Listen, if I play my cards right, it could be weeks. Are we having any tea? Hey, and if you're making chips, make sure they're drained proper. Cos if they're not, I'll be up half at night, I guarantee it. <laughs> oh, this is where you're hiding, Al. I'm hiding him? Where would a great pudding like him hide? Behind you. That just serves you right. Thanks very much, Mrs F. I was going to buy you a drink, but I'm not sure now. Well, don't rupture your brain thinking about it, cos I'm not stopping. A couple of bottles to take out, Fred. Right? Uh, how long have you been shutting her? Well, it just shows how much you notice. I've been closing half past six every night. At least while Deirdre's away. I wouldn't notice, seeing as I'm working late myself, in order to keep my husband in the manner to which he would like to become accustomed, if I'm not very careful. See you. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Ah, yeah, okay. Little cracker like that. She's wasted on that fair club. Hey, what sort of talk's that for a married fella? Not for a week yet, Alfie. Not for another week. Hey, you're a bit late with your invites, aren't you? I haven't had mine yet. Somebody for you for the high jump, Yates, if you had have had. Oh, what a charming fella he is. You know that Eunice has got herself a real... Now, what's the word I'm looking for? Pig. Yeah, that's the word. Anyway, you want not far to go after your uh, stag night, will you? Stag night? Yeah. I take it you're having it in, aren't you? Well, thought of having one or two of the lads in, yeah. Oh, don't force yourself, will you? But give over, Yates. It costs a bob or two stag do's, you know. Not if we have a kitty. A kitty? Give over, Alf. I've lost enough notes at Kitty's to pay for flipping Rosamond Street. Ah, oh, that's because it wasn't organised properly. Now, you do that and you're laughing. Well, uh, fancy organising it yourself, like, dear? Well, I could, yeah. Right, Yates, it's down to you. I'll be there. <laughs> Looks like you've talked yourself into a job. I don't mind. It'll be, be a night he won't forget, Nori, I'll tell you that. That's all sense. Look, it works in this pub. What's the point of having you stagnate in your own pub? The entertainment, innit? What entertainment? I happen to know this little darling in the business. You know, exotic dancer. Like cracker she is, appeared before all the crown heads of Lancashire she has. You mean a stripper? Keep it down, can't you? Want it to be a surprise. Well, if that's all right. No danger. You know, I reckon it'd be more interesting watching paint dry than sitting here with you, the mood you're in. But I'm not in any oh, Well, you could have fooled me. Like you could have fooled me, you mean. Me? Yes, you. You and Deirdre Lankin. I'm not blind, you know. Now there's anybody else. Yes, we've got nothing to do with anybody else. No, well, I'm not anybody else, am I? I'm family. Well, you can't put up with much more of this, that's for sure. But I want you to keep it to yourself for the next couple of days until Deirdre gets back. Oh, you've asked her to marry, have you? And she's gone away to think about it. Not quite. I have asked her to marry me, and she said she will. She's gone to tell her mother. We fixed it all up while we're in Glasgow. You happy now? Yeah. Well, I would have been happier if you'd told me without having to drag it out of you. 
You're not the only one that's got to make changes, you know. I've got to make some. Come on, give over, Marge. When you give me a flaming headache. I mean, she can't stop here forever, can she? Can't she? You don't know her. Oh, come on, it's summer now. She'll be back home before you can say Jack Robinson. Do you mind Jack Robinson? What about that? I mean, what's her fancy man? Bert, she's not going back to her husband. We are stuck with her, so you better face up to that. Hey, you're gonna enjoy this. You all these chips out, either. Thank you. You know what? One thing Jack swore about me omelettes. Well, he'd be missing them, won't he, do that? Well, the Lerin. Best omelettes at Northern Union, they said. I do something special with eggs. I think that's where I crack them. <laughs> yeah. Well? Very nice. Yeah, very tasty, love. Well, don't restrain yourselves, will you? Vera, I'm sorry your poor face, because I can't... I know, I know what you're going to say. Bert's out of a job. But you can't be miserable all your life, can you? You've got to make the best of things. I'll tell you what. When I came here, I thought to myself, I know Ivy's my best friend. But I can't go plonking myself on her just because I've left my husband. I'll tell you what, I felt guilty. But after living with you two miseries, I feel a lot better. You need me. You know, I remember my mum saying, if ever you get egg yolk on a plate, you should soak it in cold water straight away, otherwise it's a devil of a job to get off. And by Joe, she was right. Your mum never said devil. Uh, no, true. That's a word that wouldn't pass her lips. Yeah, well, I didn't mean it literally, you know. You know, I can't understand you. Yes, I had noticed that, Uncle Albert. Well, what part of me is that you can't understand this time? Well, you must have known that you and Deirdre were going to get wed a fortnight since. But you only told me last night. Now, what's up? Don't I count or something? Now, look, Uncle Albert, I'm perfectly happy to tell you the whole story, if that's what you want. Yeah. Now, while I was in Glasgow, I proposed to Deirdre and she accepted. Now, as you may have noticed, we've had our ups and downs. I hate you, Albert. Yes, we've had our ups and downs, so we decided I'd come back home and think about it. She went to her mother's and did the same thing. I rang her last night and neither of us had changed our minds. You were the first to know. In fact, you're the only one to know. And we prefer not to make it public just yet. Well, I shall say no, you can trust me. But knowing you, plenty can happen before no, the day. No, oh, no, nothing will happen. But if you want to think that, that's up to you. Well, what's going to happen to me? Oh, don't worry, you'll be taken care of. Oh, I see. You're going to have me put down, are you? You know, I'd make a joke about that. Everyone said, darn sure you'd take me seriously. No, we're not having you put down. Look, Uncle Albert, I'm marrying Deirdre. I'm not changing the world. You mean that... I mean, the world isn't going to change. That's what I mean. Hey, you know what Annie's like. God's gift of the confectionery trade. Just pop down to the corner, Bert. Hi. Hi. I'm back. Can to prove it, I'm here. Welcome home, love. So old, have you? Oh, who? Oh, Tracy. No, she got a little present for Auntie Emily. Couldn't wait to see her, so I've dropped her off. Have you had a good time, anyway? Yes, smashing, thanks, Alf. Have you got any, uh, any news? Eh? Anything to tell me? I mean, I've been talking to Ken, you know, but he's not saying anything. Well, if you're talking about my mother, she's very well, thank my you. My mother's very well, thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Honestly, aren't they nosy fellas? <laughs> and they talk about us, is there any news? No, there isn't. <laughs> Can I take a cup of tea? Hi, if you're brewing up. I'm brewing up, I'm spitting feathers. Sorry about that. Yeah, me and all, what did I want? Biscuits. A packet of them chocolate bourbons and a box of almond slices. Right. How do? I won't be a tick. Don't worry, Squire, I'm only socialising. Just reminding you not to be late for the do tonight. Ah. Oh. What do is that? Well, it's not Pancake Tuesday. But it's stag night. Oh, blimey, is it tonight? It's a good night, Trevor. He's getting married tomorrow. Oh, well, he'll be able to look after himself then. Which is exactly what he will be doing, sweetheart, seeing as we're having it in the select and women of the opposite sex are not allowed. Except one. Sugar Lamar, exotic dancer and striptease artiste. A stripper? I thought you were kidding. You won't be saying that when your eyes are popping out your head, will you? Hey, I'll be having a whiff round among the lads and don't tell Freddy. Never mind, Freddy. What about you-know-who? She won't mind. You-know-who-who? Who? I think he means Mrs Walkerlove. You know the landlady. But don't fret. She's very broad-minded. No objections to strippers at all, as long as they don't take the clothes off. Yeah, but I mean, if she's we're in the... She's kidding, isn't she? Except she isn't. 
You mean she might put the mockers on? That's one way of putting it, love. Yeah, but we're in the select. Nobody's going to see. At the drop of one shoulder strap, my lovely, the rover's return turns into a disorderly house. Well, I've booked her now. I mean, she's coming at nine. Well, you better get her unbooked, haven't you? Well, I can't, can I? She's not on the phone. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm not making no promises, but I'll try and get Lady Walker out of the way. Oh, honest. I've said I'll try because I'm daft like that and I can't stand to see grown men cry. But like I said, no promises. You're the right twit. Mind you, not a bad idea, is he? I've heard worse. <laughs> There'll be nothing like that, Mrs Walker. I'm sure you'll do your utmost, Fred. I'm not grumbling at you, not for one moment. Ever since that unfortunate affair with that dreadful Mr Lewis, your behaviour has been impeccable. Oh. And I'm sure that Mrs Nuttall has been a stabilising influence. Well, there's, uh, there's no like the love of a good woman, Mrs Walker. Indeed not. But it is a stagnite, and I repeat, I know that you will not put a foot wrong, but there are other feet involved. You won't know we're here, Mrs Walker. Right, get the tea poured. Good. What's up? Well, Mrs Walker, she was uh, a bit worried about Miss Stagdo, you know, Bet. I told her anyway, it'd be no different to one of her Lady Vittler's do's. Well, you shouldn't say things like that, Fred. Some of these Lady Vittler's do's are right rave-ups. Isn't that right, Mrs Walker? All the same, you do get a bit noisy, you fellas. And you know you are with your headaches. What are you trying to say, Bet? Well, why don't you take the night off? We'll call. You'd no need to do that. I mean, we'll be dead quiet, Mrs Just Walker. Just to be on the safe side. There's not just you, you know. That is what I said. Oh, I don't know. It's an attractive thought. No, I won't desert you in your hour of need, Fred. That's the spirit, Mrs Walker. I mean, you can always join in if you like. Well, that could be interesting. Could be, couldn't it? Me with all those men. <laughs> yes. Let's have a cup of tea and forget all about it. Uh, just say excuse me. What is that? Laughing Donkey, could I speak to Mrs. Nellie Harvey, please? Mrs. Harvey? Hello, Mrs. Harvey. It's Bert Lynch here. Rover's return. Oh, I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, our pot man, Fred G, he's getting married tomorrow and he's having his stag do tonight. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't want you to come. Absolutely, the best left on their own. No, it's Mrs. Walker that I'm thinking about. You see, it'll be a bit noisy and, well, you know what she's like. Well, I suggested that she came round to you, but she said no, she didn't want to impose. You were? To show what? Oh, you've never got a new mink coat. Oh, I'm sure she'd love to see that. Love it. Would you hang on a moment? Harvey wants a word, Mrs. Walker, on the bar phone. Really? I think she wants to invite you around tonight, would you believe? Oh, how nice. Do you know, dear, I haven't seen her since I came back from that cruise. I think she's got a surprise for you at all. <laughs> What's up with you, Bet? Well, no need for all that rigmarole. You know me, Fred. All things to all men. I mean, what's Mrs. Walker thinking of going out on a night like this with two rooms going? Could be pushed to glory. Will we echoes like? Fred's looking after his lot, and you and me's a great team, the best there is. You told us you could go out now, didn't you? Betty, light of my life. Do we want her doing a Lady of the Manor act on a stag night now, do we? 
I don't think, but if we get busy, I don't care what kind of an act she does, as long as she helps out, we won't get busy. Oh. And if we do, I'll chuck a few out, but there'll be no need. Can you imagine that lot when they start singing? Would you go in a pub where that were happening? Come on, Stan, let's see the colour of your money, mate. Five, eh? I shall take a five with a beer. Stan, you will have spilt the fivers with by the end of the evening. It's a bit steeper and kiddie, though, isn't it? Five, eh? Oh, come on, Stan, part of that's for the high-class entertainment. You won't be grousing when you cop that loss. Here, do they know you? Well, well, me. What? Well, 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 I don't want to have to hold you up at the registry office tomorrow, do I? Don't worry about that. I'll not only carry you over the threshold, I'll carry you upstairs as well. <laughs> hey, what about Annie? Oh, no, James, you better say up Trump. She's getting rid. <laughs> hey, as I live and breathe. Now, you're quite sure. Speak now, or if I'll ever hold your peace. Oh, because Shut I've up. Betty. Of course, for sure. Go and enjoy yourself, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. You do look nice, Mrs. Walker. Oh, Thank you, dear. Right. Now, I've got a taxi outside. It's going your way, so if you want a lift, that's very good kind of you. Now don't forget what I said, don't go down. <laughs> All right, love, I'll see you tomorrow. You better. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, who knows what the evening has in store, eh? <laughs> well, you don't, and that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I won't stay if you don't mind, but only two please to drink your health. Here's to happy days and better nights. I'll drink to that. Cheers, mate. See you later, mate. Uh, hey, Yates, what was it you were saying earlier, you know, when you said that uh, I didn't know what the evening I did store like? Freddy, patience is a virtue. Give it ten minutes, all will be revealed. All will be revealed. <laughs> hey, look, are you not up to something or what? Hey, what's going on in here? It's like a morgue. We're rattling around like peas in a drum here. Well, we're staying here, eh? Yeah. Yeah, we're staying here until such times as, uh, well, you until know. Until such times as what? <coughs> I've told you. All will be revealed. All will be revealed. <laughs> oh, bloody today. Hey. Why not? It's funny. It's not that flipping funny. <laughs> hey, look, are you not planning something or what? It's a good time, Freddy, that's all. Just a good time. A few laughs, a few bevies. <laughs> 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 Hey, this must be her. Am I at the right place? You certainly are, darling. Come and meet the lads. Now, this is Michael. Hello, my dear. Hello. And this is Stanley. I did do. <laughs> and this is Alfred Sidney. Hello. And this is Leonard. Hello. And this is the lad that is all about, little Freddy. Hello, love. Gentlemen, may I present Sugar Lamar. Mm. Uh, just a minute, is she... Hello, Uncle Albert. How are you? Oh, well, I'm pretty champion. Did, uh, did you enjoy being with your mother? Yes, I did, thank you very much. Though it's nice to be back. Uh, he, uh, he told me, you know, how he can. <sighs> yes, he said he was going to. Uh, well? Well, I, I, I wish you very happiness, much happiness. All, all the pair of you. Thank you. Uh, give us a pack of the fruit passes, will you please? Yes, certainly. So, he uh, just told me you were getting married, you know. He didn't give me any particulars. Yeah, well, that's because there aren't any yet. You know, we've not made any plans as yet. No, he, he just said that the world wouldn't change. Well, he's probably right. Oh, yeah. You know, you'll be better off down there. Better than living up here. And you won't see much of me, you know. Because once you get to know me, I'm not much trouble. No. Uh, are you going to the Rovers? There's a do on, you know. No, no, I can't afford the kitties. I'm, I'm going down to Ted Vernon's. It'll perhaps run to a cup of tea. There you are. Have that on me. Oh, thanks, sir. Are you paying for it? Out of my very own money. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, mind you, they do say as though it's cheaper to buy the next bigger size. Do they? Aye. Ah, well, I was never one to miss a bargain. Mm. Well, 
Oh, thank very much. <laughs> And uh, I, I hope you'll be very, very happy, the pair of you. I've never understood men. These are men, love. Oh, well, they're all a closed boot to men. Oh, except my brother-in-law. I understood him all right. He only had one thought in his head. I mean, look at that one. That one, that one. They're all fat, love. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Do you know, that dustbin thing, he's spent a full hour persuading me to come here tonight. And look at them. We stood here like a pippy on a rock cake. They're all insecure, love. That's what it is. Look, I said no and I mean no. I'm living on a flipping knife edge, me, aren't I? Look, I rely on Mrs. Walker for me living, for me, ah. for me keeper, for a roof over my head. And tomorrow there'll be two of us. I mean, what's she going to say if she comes in here and finds Gypsy Rose Lee there, down to whatever she's down to when she's finished? Look, she'll be over and done with long before Annie Walker Oh, happen, happen, yes. Look, let's make sure. Let, let us start now. Yes, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> no, I'm taking no chances. Look, I'm in for a pub of my own, aren't I? What's she going to say if she comes and catches me with her in that back room, eh? Now, look, it'll all be over in no time. But, I mean, she's here now, isn't she? Hey, darling, darling, how long does your act last? Oh, long as you like, within reason. Yeah, but can you get it over fast? Well, yeah, but it's better slow. There you are. Now, what do you say, Fred? What do you say? I say no. N-O, no. No oh. chance, no. What's it like exposing yourself in front of fellas? I wouldn't fancy it myself. What is the job you mean? Well, it, it's cold, mostly. Hey, do you know, I don't know how it is, but every place I go to is full of drafts. There's a club in Staybridge. I don't know what I've done, but they always want me in the middle of winter. And there's a door at the side of the stage. Every time Wing gets up, it blows open. Every fucking time. Oh, do you know I'm not kidding, I'm blue. Blue. That's the way they want it, isn't it? Eh? Blue. The man loved you want a drink? Oh, thanks very much, I love them. Another bottle of lager? Hey, they're always trying it on, you know. They think because you're on this game, they can't believe you're happily married. There was a fella took me home a couple of weeks back. My husband was out on night. So I asked him in like you do. Oh, no, Mr. should have heard him. I told him straight. I don't know who you think I am, but I don't take my clothes off for all and sundry. No? Yes, you are, you are hey, I wish they'd make their minds up. Look, we've set it up, we've set it up, we've set it up. Abide with me, fast falls the... Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I were in church. Vera, I've told you before, if you're not happy... I am happy here. It's just that I'm not used to peace and quiet, that's all. I mean, it's a bedlam at our house. I know. I'd been in it, remember? Oh, so you know what I mean, then? Uh, well, uh, while you two girls have a little nutter, I think I'll just nip to the Rovers for a drink with Fred G. Fred G? Yeah, it's his, uh, stag night, my sweet. Hey, kid, have we to go? You must be joking. We don't want going to no stag nights. Of course we do. Hey, listen, there'll be no competition. Well, I'm not going. Right, well, I'll get off then. I just hold on a minute, though. Why don't you take Vera with you, my sweet? <laughs> yeah, hey, it's your lucky night. Kid. Hang on, I'll get me see through earrings. Thank you very much. Bert, I'd have strangled her, I would, God's honour. Look, just do me a favour, get her out of my sight for ten minutes and give me a bit of peace. Oh, yeah? And what about me, then? I might have known you'd have had summer up your sleeve. Listen, Betty, I told Eddie yes. I said you're in lumber, but it was too late. We couldn't stop this girl from coming. Anyway, I don't know what you're fretting about, because the way things are going, she'll not get to unfasten the top button of a raincoat. Quite right, I know. I think it's disgusting. Fair enough. We're not paying her out of the kitty until she's done her act. Them's my sentiments and all. Definitely. Right, that's settled then, right? Mind you. I was looking forward to it. Yeah, so was that. Well, it would have brightened the evening up a bit, wouldn't it? Uh, not going to happen, though, is it? No, not since Fred put his size tens in. Can't we get rid of G somehow? Stanley, it is Fred's stag night. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Look, it's my doing it, and I'm in charge of the pub, aren't I? And I'll say no, and that's it, no. Well, who's paying me, then? I was promised 15 quid for tonight, and I am here, aren't I? Well, don't look at me, love. If it hadn't been for little Freddy here, you'd have been out there now performing your artistic repertoire. Don't bring me into this, Yates. If you'd have mentioned this to me in the first place, this young lady would be safe in the bosom of her own home. But I'm not, am I? I'm here. 
Look, we know that, love. Well, who's paying me then? Don't look at me, love. Oh, don't look at me with payments concerned. I'm out, no pay, no. Look, it was you who's booked me. Yeah, but I'm not exactly responsible for the cancellation, am I? Of course you are. You book to you pay. If it doesn't pay, love, sue me. I've got a leg to stand on. Oh, hang on. Is that her over there? Yeah, we're friends. I'll go cheer her up. That means she'll be shooting herself any minute. Doing you out your money, have a look. Look, just keep out of this, will you, Vera? Hey, don't let them try it on, kid. You'll stick up for your rights. Look, I'm not going without me 15 quid. Yeah, you'll tell them, kid. Bet. What time do you say Mrs. Walker were coming back? Any minute, love, if not sooner. Right, come on, you look. Get it sorted out. What a great stag night this has turned out to be, eh? Couldn't happen to a nicer fella. <laughs> oh. Uncle Albert was in the shop earlier on. Oh. What did you tell him? I told him we were getting married. I had to be an embroidery. Not exactly. Did you, um... Did you tell him the world wasn't changing? Oh, well, words to that effect. Yes, well, that apparently includes living arrangements. He thinks we're going to live with him. Oh, I suppose it's only to be expected. He's an old man, he's frightened. Will you tell him, or shall I have a word? No, I'll tell him. My job. Hey. Am I worth it? Um... More than worth it. Right, have you got the money then? Yeah, oh. muggins, cops as usual. Oh, come on, be fair. You went at it like a bullet at a gate, you know. We're not paying for something we didn't get. She never even took her coat off. Right. Look, I did this for G to enhance his flaming stag night. Well, get him to go arms, then. Oh, yeah, very fully. Give me a stone, I'll give it a blood transfusion. Well, there's only one thing for it, Eddie, lad. You'll just have to pay up and look pleasant about it. You've got more than that. I've been to flaming Wembley, Stan. Sixteen oh. flaming quid. <laughs> never mind, mate. You're still in the kitty. Get him in, Stan. Aye, all right, I will. Right then, see ya, kid. About time, too. Oh, time. Very much. I'll get off then. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll walk you home, shall I? What? To Patrick Croft? <laughs> Patsy Croft? That's miles off. Shall I phone for your taxi, Eddie Love? Oh, less of a joke, say, Lynch. Come on, love, let's have you off the premises. I'll take you myself. You what? Unless you've got any other bright ideas. Come on, darling, let's have it. Ta-ra. Eh, sorry we didn't have the pleasure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, would you flaming credit it? He mocks off with a beard. Hey, uh, listen, lads, would you like me to give you a song? Ah, oh, shut up, Vera. Rose return. Oh, hang on a minute. Eddie, see if Fred's got Eunice. Who? Hey. Eunice, see if he's gone to ask the word with He's gone, love, I just heard the car. Has he? Oh, dear. Hello, love. Yeah, I'm sorry, love. What a shame. You've just missed him. Yeah, he's just taking the stripper home. Yeah, that's right, love. The stripper. Yeah. Uh, happy wedding day. Well, he told the truth. Well, you've got it right. I mean, you sure that's what he said? Fred's taking the stripper off. That's what this chap said on the phone. Look, don't get me wrong, love. When I rang up, I wasn't checking on Fred or anything. I mean, I just wanted to say how thrilled I was about everything. Well, didn't I, Debbie? Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, a stag night's a stag night, and normally I wouldn't bother. And if they're daft enough to throw good money away on a stripper, well, that's their lookout. Hey, ma'am, can I have my bus for... But when your husband-to-be takes a stripper home on the eve of your wedding... Yeah, well, listen, Alf probably knows something about it, but you'll have to box a bit clever, because if you ask him straight out, he'll not split. Oh, love all ready for the big day? I was just passing by with my daughter, um, Debbie. Oh. I thought I'd pop in to see about the buttonholes. Oh, ma'am, I need my bus fare. Oh, here's your flipping bus fare, my, the pot. Look, and see you're ready when your granddad's ready. And wear that dress I've just bought mm. you. There's no need to worry about the buttonholes. Mrs Walker's ordered carnations. And did Mrs Walker order the stripper last night? The one you had at the stag do? I only ask because when I rang up, I was told Fred had taken her home. Ah, yes, she did go home. Uh, mind you, how she got there... Well, I will have to find out. I will see Freddy. His best forgotten love. That's flipping Yates, isn't it, with his big wooden spoon? 
I heard about a fellow once, you know. Disappeared after his stag do. Turned up on the docks the next day, minus his trousers. It's to be hoped Fred got home all right. It's to be hoped he's still got his trousers and all. <laughs> I don't know where he is. No sign at all? Yeah, not since you left with that stripper. Well, he has a key. He could have come in after we locked up. His bed's not been slept in. Has her nibs sent him out for summer? Mrs Walker? She's only just got up, feeling a bit fragile and blaming Nellie Harvey's cheap sherry. She's not asked for him, then? No, and if she does ask for him, I shan't know what to say. She'll go berserk when she knows he's out with her rover. <laughs> it's only two hours, you know. Oh. Half past eleven, he's supposed to be at that registry office. <laughs> Good morning, Fred. Good morning, Elizabeth. Morning. Fred not appeared yet. He says having a lie-in. Oh. Mm. Everything ship shape after the stag night. No blood, no broom bottles. <laughs> All scrubbed up and swept off Mrs. Walker. Oh, I'll get off with you. Dead bodies stacked in the yard. Chorus girls all had the breakfast. Take the notice, Mrs. Walker. It all went off very quiet. Good. Well, we'd better call Fred, hadn't we? And then we'll start on the salads. Yes. Why don't we tell her? That's us, isn't it? Daft. Well, if you don't come back soon, somebody will have to tell her. It is 20 to 10. I mean, how long does she normally lie in of a Saturday morning? Hmm. Generally creeps out about dinner, I reckon. Does she? I won't mind, but my book's still under there. All right, all right. I'll give her a check in a minute. Well, you better make it quick, aren't you? Otherwise, she's going to be there when racing comes on. Oh, will you stop chuntering? It's all right you talking, but she could be there hours. And then what? We're going to have that silly pantomime with her hair and then her nails. Oh, get you. It'd be different if it was Gail's mother, wouldn't it? I mean, you'd be all over her. Oh, come on, Bert. Have some charity. Look at her. She's never going to see 40 again, is she? Can't get no affection married to that dry stick of husband of hers. Hey, I think we ought to ring Jack. Well, he'd have to be shift himself. No, and do you blame him, poor lad? Hey, the dance, she's flaming led him. Oh, then. The fault's not all on her side, you know. Right, I'll go and have a shave then. And if you could manage to raise the sleeping beauty, I would be very grateful. No. Regrets. I've had a few. But then again, too few to mention. Nothing doing. Well, Betty's keeping Nick's in case he creeps in the back. But for my money, he'll not show his face, won't Fred, Jake? Don't sound so pleased. Pleased? It's that poor woman. Because if he hasn't opted... Make your day, he had, wouldn't it? I bet he's on a boat with half Her Majesty's silver and all. Has it been counted? Stop broadcasting. Well, I think the bobby should be fetched in. Oh. Could I speak to Fred, please, Mrs Walker? It's supposed to be bad luck, you know, dear. Well, it is rather important. Better call him then, Bet. But he's not come through the back here. Fred! You stupid twit! Shut up, Shimmy! Yeah. We can't keep it quiet any longer. Oh, it's got half an hour yet. Listen, Betty, his beloved's come. She's in the bar and Hilda's in the robbery hall. Oh. Rover's return. It's Jonas' dad, said Clark. Yes, I, yes, I think she is here. Yes. Ask him if he knows where Fred is. He can't find his cufflinks. So tell our Eunice I can't find my cufflinks. Tell him we can't find the bloody bridegroom. Ah, look, look, there's no for it. You'll just have to go in there and tell him he's been out all night. He's still missing. Oh, Eunice, your father can't find his cufflinks. And incidentally, the bridegroom's done a bunk. Hello, love. Look, we've got your number, so I'll get your daughter to ring you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, Betty, have I been missed? Once she gets up there soaking, she's going to be at least an hour, isn't she? I thought she was going to drown last night. Hey, and another thing. She does not lock the door of the doings when she oh. was in. Look, will you just keep your ears pricked? I don't want to copy us. If their jackass kicked her out, she's going to want some flannel. Oh, he will, that. He'll want the crown jewels throwing in and all. Do you want to talk to him? No, I do not. Right. You. Well, don't put me off my stroke, then. Hello? Is that Jack? This is Ivy. Jack, you do know that we're putting your uh, veer up, don't you? 
No. Well, she's not told you. Hmm. Bet you've been a bit worried then, haven't you? Well, Jack, she's eating her heart out here for you, honestly, she is. And everything she... else she can lay her hands on and all. I think, um, I think she's just waiting for you to make first move, you know, Jack. Perhaps if you called round to see her. Oh, that's big of you, Jack, it is, really. Hmm. What are you, funny ossity? Hmm. Zung up. What for? I hope she's coming. Flaming Nora, what the heck have you got on? It's my slimming soap. Don't tell me I haven't seen a slimming soap before, OK? Not that I need to slim. Hey, but it looks good. Don't say it. Don't go on the bus like that, love. They'll think the Martians have landed. <laughs> oh. Missing? They said I went missing. Oh, I was just up early. I went for a walk on the Red Wreck. Mrs Walker said you were still in bed. Well, I mean, she might have thought I was. And there's Hilda pulling out a chair and saying, you better sit down, love. Well, Hilda, she's puddled, isn't she? And then Bet appears and starts going all round the houses. Oh, yeah, look, I've, uh, I have something to tell you about Bet, love. She's, uh, she's a bit jealous, you know. But she fancied me at one bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you get the picture. She's trying to put the block in between you and me, love, you know. I have a feeling she's trying to protect you. Protect me from what? Well, for instance, this stripper business. Look at him. Lion is flaming head off. If he knew how jammy he was. I bet if I was to read her tea leaves, I'd see disaster with a capital D. Not a word, Hilda. Well, I mean, what could I do, you and he? I mean, Yates, just brings this bird in, doesn't she? She starts doing a strip. Shall I tell you what my first thoughts were? To get your binoculars? My first thought was to get her out of this pub. Oh, I bet. My first thought, love, it was to get her outside, it was. I'm banging him for a divorce, I am. Look, I'm not kidding, love. It was just to protect the chances of getting our own pub. As soon as I heard that word stripper, my first instinct was to get her outside. It was, love, honestly. Just to, well, to protect the chances of getting a pub of our own. I can't wait for that. Honest, I can't. I just said we were going to put on a good deal, that's all. Not stingy like Preggie's stingy. Oh, yeah? Is he stingy? What? Nobody invited outside the family to his, do you know? Except folk like Bet and Hilda Ogden. They're only going to wait on. OK, so Fred's wedding arrangements don't meet with your full approval. I'm not interested in his arrangements. I'm not going anywhere near his wedding. Yes, well, just don't go offering free beer to all comers to mine. Deirdre might just want a quiet wedding. In any case, you weren't supposed to say anything. You're supposed to get them spoons done. I've done the spoons. I suppose we'll be getting our own spoons and things. You know, starting from scratch, everything new. Yeah, well, they won't be like these, any old. Look, I'm just going out to the back door to shut on this knife. Hello! Oh, come and join us! <laughs> Hi. Hiya. There we are. Hi. Saturday morning ritual, rubbing up the spoons, etc. Oh, I brought you metal polish. Not much call for it now, you know. Uh, I think it's habit for me. It gets into your bloodstream and turns you into a sort of working class Puritan. <laughs> Never mind. We'll soon be away. Yeah, we'll soon be away. And I vote for Sweden. Hey, have you told Uncle Albert yet? Um, not in so many words, no, but I think he realises. Mm. Hello. Just well, brought your order round. Yes, Deirdre agrees with you. The spoons are lousy. Of course she does. Well, you've got to look at these. Anyhow. When you bring it to live here, we'll have a right good rubbing to do. Just thee and me, your little un, and spoons and teaspoons. Well, for a man who spent the night with a stripper. Do me a favour. I'm sorry, I forgot. You kicked on a floor. Cross me out not to die. A little bit fair. I mean, stay here and you weren't capable of our tells. I mean, of course I was capable. But us were there, weren't he? It's built like a brick closet in. If you just said to me, Alf, Take her home. It poor for Alf. All you were saying was get him off. <laughs> well, I think you did the right thing, love. You could have got yourself breathalyzed, you know. Of course I could have. No, me and her car. That'd be oh, yeah. me on booze straight through the window, wouldn't it? Oh, still. I just want to know the fellow that uh, shot me on that blower. Oh, let it drop. Mm. Just get right. wet and enjoy yourself. Yeah, don't start with your feuding. Well, how can you enjoy yourself with Yates pulling strokes like that? Nobody said it was, Eddie. In any case, she's forgiven you, hasn't she? 
Oh, well, I could have had an owl in bed, could I? As it is now, I'm mad. Listen, Fred, dash in there, dash you in there. look a treat, my love. Don't you look a treat, Mrs. Wolf? Oh, very smart. A credit to us. Well, many congratulations, Fred, and half a year's ahead. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Now, the car's at the door, the wedding party's in the bar, and Mrs. Ogden will be here at 11 to hell with the tapes. Oh, we best get off, then. And a buttonhole for you. Oh, oh thank you, Ross. Excuse me, Fred. Look. Good luck, <laughs> This reminds me of uh, 20 years ago, you know, my mum fixing me hanky and my, my flower and my head no waiting out there. Oh. Come on, lad. Let's get it over with. Right. Come on, Alf. See you. All the best, love. Ta ta. Ta ta. Stan, Hilda, come on, they're going. Oh, come on. Come on. I know, right? sure if we just keep dropping the odd hint that you'll get the general idea well that's not the impression i get mm. it's independence itself you know when you get down to it uncle albert he's also 80 odd <sighs> i think i'm being hard well it's probably because you're used to him you just can't see it well, i don't think he'd be content to live on his own nobody leaving the tin off the boot polish nobody going mad with the coal doing the spoons on his own on a saturday morning uh... hiya hiya yeah. Hey, uh, give us 20 thousand. Good. Right. Oh, wait. In tea, smashing. Can I have them as the deposit? What, you mean part <laughs> exchange? Oh, uh, that what part? Yeah, right. Well, I'll see you then. Bye. Hey, listen. If you see Alf, tell him no mucking about with the bridesmaids and I want him back here on duty at four o'clock. Right. Bye. To Darlo. That's our Jacob. Get him team. I thought you cast the shackles off. Oh, I have, kid. Hey, I've left him with a sink full of pots as a right monk at their dishcloth. <laughs> hey, I thought I saw him going past earlier on. Oh, our Jack. Sure it was him. Flaming Nora. Oh, I don't know. There's always somebody, isn't there? I'm busting, Ross. Hello. How are you? No, you can't see her. She's having her hair done. Oh, you can't see her tonight? Right, I'll tell her. Vera's boyfriend. Hey, Jack's been. You Vera's are. stuff, it was on backyard. Look, he's left a note. Vera's stuff. I've dumped the rest in the dustbin. Jack. Get up them stairs! <laughs> Stop him, somebody, before his friends are thinking about it. Ah, gum, he's got the bit between his teeth, all right. If that's the bit between his teeth, what's that? Is that is my mum. Drinks all round, please. Plus your pleasure, my dear. And, of course, the other gorgeous creature. Found your cufflinks, did you? Yes, thank you. Right, what's yours, love? There's a new music in this place. A string orchestra failing that, a string vest. In that case, I'll have a tequila and tonic. Yeah, it's been a right rum do. Third stop this, you know. You can't get that car to go past the blue before. I knew a rag and bone man once had a horse like that. <laughs> hey, Ladies and gentlemen, may I extend best wishes to the bride and bridegroom yeah, on behalf of Newton Ridley, Aye. my staff, my clientele, and of course, myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Sherry will be served in my living room to the guests at 1.30. Goodness knows what their shoes are like. 
What's this all is fetched then? Is this it? We've well, seen no tells. Well, the big theatre. Look, why don't you go round there? You know what I mean? No fear. Hey, this is him being crafty. Open now, go around. If he's put my red lorry stress in that dustbin, I'll swing for him. Do you remember it, Ivy? That one with long split and that low cut neckline. I could have gone out in that tonight. Right, I'm just going down the road, my sweet. To uh, Bobby Newton's. You know, in with the pigeons. The you back? Very handy. Uh, Vera, uh, about tonight, love. Hey, don't give me any sermons. You fellas not coming is just wrong. Well, that'd be flaming Hitler, won't it? it will be been round to see her. I'd go with you, you know, if you decided to talk it over with Jack. I mean, we could go after tea. Oh, look, my bits are black. My bits are class, kid. What? Me? Go crawling to that big lummox. She must think I'm potty, kid. Eight and that Harry wet dross can drop dead. I'm out tonight, kid, in this dance at Gatsby. Pinch yourself out. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, now, I'd just like to call on the bride and groom to cut the cake, pausing only to thank Mrs. Walker for making this beautiful piece of confectionery. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, I see what went into it, you know. Cost your fortune, that cake, in his shop. Hey, just a minute. Thank you. Look what it says here. Must be eaten by January 31st. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on, let's get on. Can I have a knife? No, I put my hand down. Give him a chisel. I'll give him a long time. Here, that knife should be eating. Hey, hey. Just hold it like that. Oh, right, Now, sing out if you want a big slice. We say a bit to you, please. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, now, yes, I'd like to Fred. call on the, uh, oh, the bridegroom to drop a few of his H's. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. There you are, Sid. Hold it, hold it, hold it, Fred. Right, well, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would just like to say... How tickled I am! <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you, Mrs. Walker, for the wonderful food and, and uh, oh, to Bet and Betty for, for all the help they've given. And thank you for the question. Thank you. I shouldn't have had any Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on. And thank you all very, very much for the very nice presents. And to you, Sid, for the... Uh, for the cuckoo clock. Oh, we're all thrilled about the cuckoo clock. Uh, it doesn't even work. It's been trying to fix it for a month. Oh, <laughs> I should play nicely. Fred will fill a gap in your life, won't he, dear? Anyway, I'm sure that you must have missed yeah. not having a yeah. father at home. Yeah. And he seems very fond of you. Oh, yeah, very fond. Yeah. He's kissed me three times already. <laughs> I see Ken and Deirdre have made it official. Well, who says? Albert says. Yeah, well, it figures, doesn't it? Old Faithful, Mr. Stick in the Mud, the security bit. No contest. Nah, not when there was a kid involved, I reckon. <laughs> or have I hit on a raw spot? A raw spot? <laughs> but when another bird's involved, been in the game too long, innit? Uh. See you, Lynn. Hi. Hey, Len, how about it, then? How about what? But a stripper business. I mean, I'm 15 quid down the swanny. What is it, a known? Known? Do you know what gets me? I shell out the ackers and then Fred G cops the flaming Judy. <laughs> he had peasants, best wishes from Fred. Feed the poor and starving, he said. He's a changed man already. Very tasty. Yeah. <laughs> he had Chuck, said you a nice bit of Tom. Smash him. What about me? Where are my goodies? You've got a nerve coming in here, H. Never mind the flipping goodies. Oh, charming. And I don't like any cracks. I've had enough cracks from you already. All right, cool it. Cool now. it? After all the trouble he's caused? It's only a joke. Yeah, the jokes are all right while well, he's being a flaming comic, aren't he? We don't want any bother. He glassed on me, didn't he? I would have had it all kicked into touch if he hadn't opened his big gob. You took the sipper home and I'm in morning about. Listen, you can shut your gob and all. I was doing that just for the good sake of... The, 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 just for this pub, that's what I was doing. Ah, for. I think we're bonkers. Yeah, you can just button it up and all, Oggy. Listen, less of the Oggy, if you don't mind. His name's got a handle to it. Yeah, if you want to take a crack at me, you take a crack, G, but you leave Oggy out of it, all right? I'll yeah. take a crack at you any time, mate, all I'm telling right, you. All right, Fred, all right, give over now. I'll give over? I'll give him a bunch of five. Oh, hey, hey, listen, me. now listen. Say your land you want. It'll look lovely on your honeymoon. Don't you say that. No, it's been a lovely day. Ladies and gentlemen, the wedding party are leaving, but before they go, could I ask you to raise your glasses and wish Fred, whose cheerful disposition and attentive service you all know, and his lovely bride, Eunice, 
every happiness and a safe return from their honeymoon in Rill. Cheers. 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 Have a lovely holiday. It's been a right nice job. How long are you going to be working? She'll change her tune when she's had Fred and his lovely bride for a month or two. Plus the lovely in-laws on the doorstep. Rather have them a week than a fortnight, that's for sure. Oh, cheers, Doc. Cheers, love. Tea's ready. Oh, 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 I didn't know you were that time. Where's Deirdre? Deirdre? Oh, in the shop, I suppose. Alf's on best man duty. Oh, I must have been dreaming then. Did you go to the wedding? No, no, I didn't bother. I thought that Deirdre and that young son of hers had been here having the teas. Maybe tomorrow. Nice proper tea, eh? With a clean tablecloth. Everything laid out proper. Yeah. Well, we'll see what we can do tomorrow. A nice Sunday tea. That'd be a regular treat. And it could be, couldn't it? I mean, once you wed and she's living here. Well, when I do marry Deirdre, right. and we haven't fixed a definite date yet, but uh, when we do marry, it's fairly certain that we won't be living here. You do understand that? <laughs> well, what are we having? Cornflakes? No, you're not. I've done you a cooked breakfast. You never. And don't sound as if I've never given you bacon and eggs before. Egg and bacon? I don't believe it. You hear that, Nick? Things are picking up. Yeah. Hey, toast it all. Well, you need something inside yourself doing two jobs. Well, that's worth it, though, isn't it? Is it? Of course it is. At least we're getting our bills paid before they start going yellow on the edges. Money isn't everything. Before you start saying what it isn't it can buy, it can't. What? Well, it can't buy your health for a start. Well, I've got news for you, young lady. I'm a big, strong lad. Well, I'm not. I'm little and weak, and I need me big, strong lad at home sometimes. Ah, I see. So we're getting to it now, aren't we? Well, I do. You want everything new, don't you? I mean, you want me at home, you want me out working. Don't worry yourself, I can stand it. You've not seen yourself in petrol fast asleep, have you? Well, I've got it off to a tea. I do worry a bit. It won't be forever, love. Anyway, I'm damn lucky to have two jobs when... I know. But what are you going to Bolton for? Well, it's Gold Cup Day, isn't it? The big race. And well, the Queen and Prince Philip are going, and this mate of mine at the job centre, he says, uh, Hey, Bert, he said, I've got two tickets for the Royal Enclosure. Do you fancy going? I'll fix you up with a grey top hat and a coat. I what? didn't ask for any sarcasm, Bert. Well, why else do you think I'm going? I mean, what would I be going to Bolton for? Why do I go anywhere? What a job. Well, chance of one, yeah. This mate of mine, Billy Garner, well, he's just got himself fixed up at an engineering works. In Bolton? Well, uh, Farmworth. But it's uh, this side, you but know. But Bertie's I mean? still a heck of a long way to travel every day, isn't it? Well, come on, let's get the job first. Then we'll worry about how far it is, all right? All right, mate. How long are you going to be? Well, I'm not going to rush, love. I thought I may as well have a mooch around Bolton while I'm there, see if he's out doing, you know what I mean? Uh, I'll be back for me tea. Do you want me to pack you any sandwiches? No, because Billy says he'll sneak me in their canteen, you see. Mm, it's all right for some, isn't it? It's not a pleasure trip, you know. I'm beginning to wonder, actually. Bert. I'm not going off skiving. Yes, I'm going but it's actually. still looking... getting it away from Miss Piggy for day, isn't it? Oh, her. Uh, what's she doing up there, any row? Getting herself ready. Look, just because she sleeps on that settee, don't mean she has to get dressed down here and all, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't put that past her. What are we going to do about her, Bert? I don't know, love. You see, the walls are not thick enough for bricking her in, are they? Oh, Bert. Well, how else are we going to get shut of her? Shut up, she's coming. Hey, uh, your cold water tap's dripping in the bathroom. There's one thing I can't stand, because it's the dripping tap. I know. It needs a new washer. Like Jack, is there? Come day, go day, God send Sunday. Uh, no, he's not. He's very good as rule. It's just that he's got a lot on his mind. She loves you. Hey, I've been thinking, you know, I should be paying rent for staying here. Uh, no, thanks. Well, I... Uh, because it's only a temporary arrangement, that's why not, Vera. Temporary, love, you see. And, uh, you know, well, we can't charge you for sleeping on sofa. No, I was thinking that. Hey, but we could always get a bed in Brian's room, you know. Oh, oh, 
Oh, come on, I mean, what's the point, Vera? I mean, well, your Jack could come in here any day and drag you back home, love. Oh, I could if I let him. Anyway, if you're happy, I am. Don't. I'll get it. Hello, 4329. Yes, yes, just hang on. It's for you, Vera. Is it a fella? Yes. It'll be Andre. Hello? Oh, you are up early. I thought you liked your bed. <laughs> hey, you could be put in prison, you know, for saying things like that. With the devil. You what, when? Mm -hmm. Getting a conscience about last week, are you? I suppose I could scrounge a bit of time off at my dinner hour. Just a minute, I'll ask my mum and dad. Yeah, they say it's all right. When? Ten to one, outside Wellington. All right, love. See ya. It's exciting. Right. Now, don't let me catch you switching this on again while you're still in bed. State it's in. It's a miracle you didn't kill yourself. Do you hear what I said? You could have killed yourself. Well, it does save some folks a lot of trouble if I had. Look, Uncle Albert, this is serious. These things are dangerous. They've got to be properly handled. I'm not pots for eggs yet, you know. And besides, if out did happen, who cares? Look, Uncle Albert, just because Deirdre and I won't be living here after we get married doesn't mean that we won't be bobbing in all the time. We care if you're interested. Well, you don't need to bother. I used to look after myself during the first lot when I could have been blown to smithereens any minute. And I can do it again. Well, I'll put this on your bed and remember what I said. You're an ungrateful old devil. Am I in the way? No, of course you are. Only we're just sat there, staring at the wall. Well, Colin had taken the paper with him and there was nothing on the wireless, so I thought he'd just pop round to Gail's. There you are. One more peep out of you and I'll tell your dad. You look as if you've been a mother all your life. <laughs> I feel as if I've been a mother all my life. Go on, you love it, I can tell. Motherhood shining out of you in all directions. <laughs> it is honest. Yes, well, it's nice. <laughs> Certainly seems to suit you. When are you going to try it? Don't ask me, ask Colin. He'll tell you to the date. He's got it all worked out, he has. When we buy the videotape recorder, when we move out... Are we're you moving? Well, you will do before any baby arrives. Colin says so and that's that. We're not bringing up a baby in a rabbit touch like this. I know. If it were left to me, we'd stay. I think they're lovely little houses. But you know, Colin... Yes. Well, you don't, but you'd know what I mean if you did. We are a bit pushed for room, actually. Well, it don't show. You've got it lovely. Oh, heck, have you seen the time? He's coming home for his lunch and I've nothing for him. He'll kill me. <laughs> what are you and Colin doing tonight? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> Tell you, I suppose, why. Do you fancy coming round for a drink? Oh, yeah, we'd love to. About eight? Lovely. On one condition. Take Colin up to see Nicholas. Might give him ideas. <laughs> Sorry. If you'd stopped me, I'd have had to go right back to the beginning. Always remember that. If I'm adding up or following a knitting pattern, don't interrupt me. It'd be more than my life's worth. <laughs> Hiya. Mm. 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 Hey! Put him down. He's on the way he's been. And remember you, you're handling food. Sorry, Eddie. Will you look at that smile? Radiant, innit? How do you pull a beard like that? Oh, I don't know. Personal charm, intelligence, wit. Modesty, uh, don't forget. Modesty. I think it's all the fluoride in the world to myself. <laughs> I mean, this rush to holy wedlock. There's Fred and his missus, there's you two, there's Charlie and Di. Charlie and Di? Oh, Charlie and Di. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's not true to come to live in Mosley Street. Oh. Anymore. It's getting very lonely on the shelf for us unmarried ladies and gentlemen. You oh, know. go on, you're a mere youngster. Anyway, my granny always used to say there's a lid for every pot. Mind you, where you'd find a lid to fit that one. <laughs> you see, that's it. I'm not so much your normal fella, more your figure of fun. It might surprise you two to know that inside this jovial exterior is a serious human being trying to burst out. Well, don't burst in here. <laughs> I'll have a meat and potato pie, please. <laughs> I was only kidding, Eddie. Eddie? I was only kidding. It's too late now. The arm's done. <laughs> He's a case, isn't he? Yeah. 
Hey, but did you ever wonder about fellas like Eddie Yates, though? I mean, life's not all pints of beer and meat and potato pies, is it? There must be times when he actually sits down and wonders if he's going to be on his own for the rest of his life. I know I did. Yeah, me too. We're lucky. Yeah. Mm. Very quiet in here, after the way. Yes, and the Ogdens are out. At least there's no noise coming through the wall. Hey, have you come in here to buy something, or are you just passing the time of day? Uh, no, no, I want a tin of lentil soup. Right. I thought I'd try to reach Uncle Albert's heart by means of his stomach. Still fractious, is he? Well, let's <coughs> say he's not exactly dripping with bonhomie, but then... Uh, he never was. He never was. Still... Now, look, I've warned you about that conscience of yours. You've got to keep reminding yourself that he is not a blood relative. He's an uncle by marriage. He has a daughter. A brother in Glasgow, and he is not our responsibility. You're not convincing yourself, are you? Uh, no. Who oh, says I'm having a woman to look after me? Well, Deirdre. I mean, when she marries Ken, she'll look after you, won't she? She'll do nothing of the kind. I'm not having a moving in and taking my house over. Well, I thought... It is my you house, you know. And I've looked after it for long enough. And I've looked after myself. And I'll do it again. I'm very sorry I spoke. Yeah. Some folk, eh? Ooh, I'm not talking to him again. Say good morning, you're going to play him an argument. He'll get his drink and that's it. Hey, do you think we'll be as bad as him at his age? Ooh, I'll shoot myself before I get <laughs> like him. <laughs> well? I'm thinking, aren't I? Oh, you've been thinking for the past five minutes. Come on, Stanley, it's not a question of world shattering importance. It's what do you want with your chips, fish, or steak and kidney pie? Still, I suppose that is world shattering importance to you. I think I'll have a fish. Tell him to make it a big one. Oh, I will. Can I have a big fish for me gutsy husband? I'm full of tricks like that. Now, think on you have the table laid by the time I get back and butter some bread, and I don't mean half a loaf. Hey, have they got any scallops? I like scallops. You like anything that makes the journey from your mouth to your stomach, you. Now, remember what I told you. Get yourself home, Betty. Give him ten minutes and then chuck him out. Right, hello. Oh, hello, Elder. Do you know what I think about you over night? Oh, yeah? Yeah, though, this horror film on telly. And this creature had to rise from the Black Lagoon and it had spikes all over its head. And do you know what I thought to myself? Do you mind? Where have you been? Look, you know perfectly well where I've been, so stop nosing. Listen, you're going to come a cropper lady playing them games. Look, I only had a drink with him, didn't I? I can't go up to any trouble in a crowded pub at dinner time. No, it's stop mithering me. I've got Eddie. Be a conscience pricking you. Oh, do you want to? Do you? Because you can have it if you like. No, I don't. Hey, man, you love you. Do look a bit pale. Oh, God, do you know it's thumping? Well, tell you what, do you want to go across the road and have a lie down? I'll tell Bob when you're not feeling very well. Oh, you're a good you kid. Hey, uh, have I still got that key? No, don't bother rooting. I'm going across. I'll let you in. Hey, you are a good man. Come on, then, Stanley. Workers of the world unite. Hey? Oh, my God, I forgot who I was talking to. Go as one for the road, Betty, will you? Ah? Oh. No, I better have a pack. Ah, oh, of course. You live the other end of the street, don't you? <laughs> Sounds have to tell you, though, I don't mind. And you remember to bring a bottle of wine? Yes, I remember to bring the wine. Look, I'll tie a knot my trouser leg if you like. I had to ask him round. She's forever on at me for us to go round there, and I keep putting her off because of Nicky. We could take him with us one night, but I just thought until... Look, will you cheer up, woman? I'm very pleased they're coming. I've got this wife's seat. She nags me all day and all night. So it changes as good as the rest, innit? it? You're very lucky having me. Anyway, from what I know about Sue, that we come from all angles, I mean, she can do her fair share of yakking, can't she? Well, she's my friend, so you just be nice to her. Right. What's he like? I don't know. I've not met him. He sounds all right. What's he do? He's a rare. You've seen his car with the firm's name on it. I don't even know which is their house. Is that him with the Cortina? Yeah. 
God, he's probably coming to collar and tie him. What if he does? You've got a collar and tie. Well, I'm not wearing it, though. Look, wear what you like. Just don't forget that bottle of wine. Do you want a good idea? Have you got time? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. Hey, Nicky. We've got visitors coming tonight. You just behave yourself. Do you hear? You behave. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Mavis. Oh, bless her. No, I was just looking round the wholesalers and I saw those and I thought, I know a little girl who'd love one of those. <laughs> oh, it's something and nothing. Do you want to go in the back and play with it, darling? That's it. Be, be back in a minute. Here, take Susie. That's it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Do you know she's spoiled rotten and she doesn't appreciate it. She's getting very willful in her old age, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, Mavis, I'm sorry to butt in, but our cake's ready, love. Oh, yes, they are. It should be Vera's turn by her eyes, but seeing as she's sleeping off a bad head, mm. Muggy's ears doing a lot. How much do I owe you, love? 85, please, love. Oh, Thank you. you. Mike Ball's been going soft in his old age, is he? Not to have noticed. Oh, I mean, I thought with you scarving off to buy cakes and uh, your mate entertaining her fancy man in the middle of the afternoon. Well, Vera, didn't you know about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm walking down the back entry minding my own business and this fella pushes past me bold as brass and goes straight in your backyard. And who opens the door to him but Madam, Madam Duckworth? Oh, and well, how did you know it was a fancy man? Oh, you do jump to conclusions, Elder. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, there could be several quite innocent explanations. Give us one, then. <laughs> well, it could have been the gas man. Do you kiss the gas man? Did I thought I heard somebody? I'll bet you did. Have you been in our bedroom, you? Uh, well, you told me to have a lie down, didn't you? I mean, did you mean on settee? You've had that Harry in here, haven't you? What? Where have you got that from? Uh, because he was seen. That's where I've got it from. Coming down in the back entry. Hilda Ogden saw him. <laughs> Hilda Ogden? You don't believe what she says, do you? I mean, Hilda Ogden. She's had it in for me for years, and you, ever since that pole's do. <coughs> I mean, look, it's as plain as nose on your face, kid. Ask yourself, Hilda Ogden. It's just up her street, something like this. Yeah. Uh, just a minute, lady. Uh, why did you have catch on front door, then? Well, I always do when I'm on my own. I mean, don't you? I mean, look, Bert could lose his key. Any mad Alec could find it. Be in here, cut your throat before you've chance to whistle. I mean, look, you'll take a sip from me, kid. If you're ever on your own, always put catch up. Anyway, you'll be pleased to know, kid. That lie down took me a dick off. Did it tea break? Listen, I'll carry it cakes, kid. Come on. All right, I'll get it. Oh. Hi. Hi. Mm. I won't be a dick. All right. Hi. How do you? Can I do that for you? No, thanks. I can manage on my own. Right. Right. Well, uh, we'll be off now, Uncle Albert. All right, are you? We won't be late. You can be as late as you like. Makes no difference to me. Well, we won't be late anyway. Now, is there anything I can get you before we go? What's the matter with a pair of you? Can I sew your button on? Can I help you? Are your consciences troubling you? Come on, love. Anyway, I'm glad I didn't get it in a way, love. I mean, I didn't fancy that traipse to Bolton twice a day. Well, I thought you were down to go in any road. Here, get that down here. Hey, what have you been buying this rubbish for? I didn't. Our Brian dropped it off on his way home. What for? I don't know. Perhaps he felt a bit generous. Hmm. Well, he should be saving his money, not spending it. I mean, he hasn't got that much to chuck about, has he? Bert, what are we going to do? 
Look, you've told me you got that tail from Hilda Ogden and nobody else, right? Oh, she saw him, Bert. She says she saw him. Now, come on. How many times have you said yourself you wouldn't believe a word Hilda Ogden said? Well, this time it's different, isn't it? For why? Because this time she's up against Vera and I don't believe a word she says either. <sighs> Just sort of trick she won't play. It's last straw, Bert. Hey, what do you say we get on the bus and go and see our Gail and Brian? Won't thank you, they've got company. Oh. Cheers, then. Cheers. What trade are you in, then? I told you, the two kitchens. And bathrooms. We do a big line in bathrooms. Yeah, business good. It's got to be a growth industry, hasn't it? Bigger the recession, more time people spend at home. Mm -hmm. More money they spend on the comforts. Tellies, videos, bathrooms, kitchens. They don't buy cars, and that's a fact. Can't live in a car, can you? Terrible this recession, isn't it? I think we're lucky having husbands with jobs. Mm -hmm. I'll never be short of one of them, love. I'll serve my time as electrician, tinkered about a bit with electronics, mm. enough to get by. And I'll sell any product you can put in front of me. Bit of skill in these, and a load of know-how up here, and there's always somebody willing to pay you money. Well, you think so. The man has been at work six months, and he's a, he's a skilled man. Has he got the drive, though? You need the drive. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Listen, love, um, I'll go. Right. Go with him, Colin. What for? To see the baby. What do I want to see a baby for? I'd rather have another drink. She's always nagging me. You wouldn't do that, would you, Gail? Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Oh, love, I can't sup any more of that. Hey, listen, Bert. Why don't you ring him again? Ring you again? Jack! Ask him if he'll take Vera back. Oh, oh love, I know what happened last time over them clothes, but you know what she's like. Hey, kid, I see wrong. You know, she still thinks that he's playing hard to get. She'll go back like a shot if there, Jack, really come for her. Tell him that she's fretting or something. Fretting? Are you joking? She's out now with a fancy man downtown, ain't she clubbing it? Oh, come on, he's knocked a pound. She'd ditch him if there, Jack, really turned up for her. You don't have to tell him truth. Just get her from underneath my feet. I don't know the number. We keep phone numbers in that little boot, love, there. And you're not going to believe this, but I think it's under D for Duckworth. I don't know what I'm going to say to him. Does it keep you awake at night? He's a he, not an it. Now and again. And when he does, he's in it. I'll bet. <laughs> right. Say good night. Good night, Nicholas. <laughs> good night, Nick. <laughs> Put some music on. Softly. Oh, don't bang on it, love. I'm some trouble with it. Ah, uh, it's not working. Something wrong with it, don't know what it is though. Works off crystals, that, doesn't it? It is a bit old, you know. I did buy a second hand. Yeah, it looks like old age. Still, I could have a look at it for you. Oh, he's marvellous at anything like that, aren't you, love? Now, what's the matter? It's on the blink again, love. Oh, no. Well, Colin will fix it for you. Will he be in later on tomorrow night? Yeah. Yeah, that. Throwing us together. <laughs> she is, isn't she? You better watch it, you. Hey, I'm out. Thank you, Betty. Hey, uh, you heard from the honeymooners? No, not a word. He'll have no time to write postcards. Well, you could have written a flipping book. Now then, he'll death save the marriage secrets for the Sunday papers. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made it. I hope it's worth it. This boxing on the telly. Um, I got you one in. It's flat. Oh, get it down, you do you know, huh? It's rotten beer in here, any road. Ah, oh, yeah, well, that depends on what you're used to, doesn't it? And, um... Talking about what you used to, Jack, uh, you're Vera. Look, I'll put my cards on the table. You want to get rid, and you want me to take her back, right? Right. Because she's driving you around the twist, right? Right again. Well, that's it. If she drives me around the twist and all, same difference, isn't it? Uh, no, Jack. Well, no, no, you see, there's a subtle difference, isn't there? Because, I mean, you're married to her. I mean, she's your wife. I know, and I've had her longer than you have. True, yeah. Uh, look, Jack, I mean, uh, do you want a back of dawn here? On my terms, mate. No, the fellas on side for a start. Oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't know about that, Jack. No. I mean, all I know is that uh, she wants to come back to you. Who says? She does. All the time, Jack. I mean, it's Jack this, Jack that. Has Jack been in? Has Jack phoned? Oh, it drives you crazy, Jack. Look, you've been a good husband to her, haven't you? Ah, oh, she's been damn lucky with me, you know. There you are, then, you see. Look, Jack, you see, with women, you've got to put your foot down. Now, you do that, and I guarantee she'll come crawling back with her tail between her legs. Tell you what I'll do. I'll come round to your place tomorrow, and I'll ask her. But I'm blowed if I'm pushing. She wants to go on playing silly beggars, it's no skin off my nose. 
I'm quite happy with my pot noodle. Yes. It's up to her. Keep it all right, Jack. Aye, can't grumble. Good. Not wrong with my eyesight. Oh, I can see that, Hilda. Oh, not that I'm nosy, and not that I stand gawping at folk. But if there's something there to be seen. Is Alf around, look? Oh, I told you he's gone to Newcastle on a council fact finding mission. Ah, oh, would you flipping credit it? I thought he might like the cricket on Sunday. It's a limited over match. But instead of that, he's in flipping Newcastle discussing rate structures with pneumatic blondes. Am I shocking you, Hilda? Oh, nothing shocks me about flipping council. Anyway, there's enough of it on the doorstep. Dallas is kid stuff, according to Hilda. I've just been getting the last dramatic instalment. All I'm saying is what I saw. What did she see, then? Albert Taplock climbing Emily's drainpipe. No, Hilda reckons she saw Vera Duckworth at Ivy's back door letting a strange fella in. Middle of the afternoon, house empty, Vera off work with headache. It's not bad, that, you know. Not bad as a bit of gossip goes. Let's stick it in the window. <laughs> See you, love. Alan. Hello. Hello, lovey. Hiya, Betty. Hello, my love. Um, a small tin of best salmon. Right. A lady she fancies a little bit for a lunch. Oh. Is Tracy at nursery school? Yeah, till half past. Oh. How are your wedding plans going, love? I'm being nosy. Well, we're looking for a house. I fancy a semi, but yeah. I think Ken wants something a bit fancy, which mm. comes pricey. Mm. I don't know. Probably finish up in a caravan somewhere or a houseboat on the airwell. You know, all the conveniences are salted <laughs> docks. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, kid, your tops. I mean, look, house all done, no arguments. Pork steak for a snapping. Hey, I'll, I'll tell you what, kid, I'll, I'll race you that car, have No, you go. Hey, have you told her? What? Have you told her that Jack's coming? No. Why not? Because I've got a feeling if I do tell her, she'll turn flaming awkward and go out just to spite him. But if you don't, she might just go out any road. Well, if you want to tell her about it... Don't you think I did enough last night giving Jack a talking to? Yes, and you missed your chance last night, didn't you? You should have dragged him back here while you got him. I mean, it's a toss-up now whether he turns up or not, apart from what she does. Hey, I don't want to rush you, kid, but it's getting time. Oh, you're not scrapping again, are you? How are you going when I'm not here? Oh, it's cat and dog, Vera. Do you know there's only you keeping us from flaming divorce court? <laughs> if it wasn't for you, we'd be slinging pots and pans at each other, screaming and yammering. I might be sat here now with folks dead coming out of my ears. Hello? Ah, hi, Dad. Hi, son. Mum gone back? Yeah, just. Ah, just thought I'd pop by and have my chicken sarnies with you. I should have said egg. I'll make a fresh pot. You keep him busy then? Busy? Who I'll say. Got a gearbox this safety. Should get on by about half past five. Let's have a get the good bus. Out again by quarter, wait for the filling station. Fall into bed by about midnight. Unemployment's not your problem then? Well, no. Oh, don't worry, I'm not cut to the quick. I've got enough on the domestic frontier with them two lunatics, I tell you. It's double time and then some. <sighs> what will Vera like? Yeah, I don't begin to tell you. Hey, I say, Dad, you don't know about record players, do you? I had some friends around the house last night, Mum went on the blink. Brian, we're fiddling around with that record players for hours after you and Colin left last night. Did he fix it? Did he echoes like? There you are, all nicely tucked in. He ain't used to be beaten by anything like that. Oh, I won't take Colin a tick. He could have got into that line when he gave up electrics, but, well, fitted kitchens were booming, and this opportunity to get in on the ground floor yeah. came He'll up. He'll smash him if he can. What could I do with that shopping list? I'll remind him tonight. If you can spare him, <laughs> I feel quite lost without him. <laughs> He'll be tickled pink to come round here and play the big electronics wizard. Anyway, I've got to keep fit class and he hates me going to them. He just sits there getting moody. They seem to get on quite well, don't they, Lynn Brian? Oh, I get on with most people, Colin. Well, he has to in his job, selling see. It's all about getting on with people. That's why he hates this estate. They tend to be so standoffish. It's not like living in the street, is it? Well, let's face it. I mean, they're all social climbers. You can see them walking past Bryce in the curtains. Just look at him. All alone with his memories. Poor old beggar. Yeah. I must admit, you know, I feel ever so sorry for him. But it does make it hard work. I mean, it could be a naughty old so-and-so. Yeah. Well, what can you expect? I mean, he's over 80, isn't he? He'd be left in the house this year on his own, on his Todd. Can you go to Rome, Albert? <laughs> Must be upset. Shout a bit louder, Eddie. Albert! Come in here, boiling your blooming head off. 
Ooh, keep me money in my pocket. Buy a kiss hot dry work on them flaming machines. Plus tea things packed up, two lagers better. Right. Not as bad as all that though, is it? Hey, you want to try it sometime. <laughs> Half day, crease you. Yeah, but it's uh, better than bottlings, isn't it? Oh, <clears throat> belt on. Well, it's the first factory I've ever heard of where they give you time off for curtain. <laughs> Come again. Oh, keep your wig on, it's only a joke. Only a joke? You've been tickle tackling, have you? Lots oh, of you. Oh, Vera Bell, top love. Yeah, have you been listening to her tales? Rumour she spread, she must be puddled her. I'd swear in culture what I saw. I'd take an oath on the Bible. Now, look, I'm warning you, just put a sock in it. And I don't want that. You can give her a shampoo with it. I'm not standing here supping with a flaming liar. Oh, I could have her for that. She can't blackguard me like that, calling me a liar. Have you thought what you're calling her? Have you thought that she's got a husband and this can get back? Well, if she wants to carry on, that's her business. But when she starts her funny antics in this street... Oh, oh. Anyway, our Jack's not bothered. No, she isn't. She had a flying house every night playing dominoes. He's very close to that with her. What's her name? Uh, Dora. Do you know, she's the best crib player in that place, uh, that Dora. Uh, hey, give her the shock of her life, wouldn't it, if Jack started to play her game? <laughs> 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 yeah, I looked in earlier, but the shop seemed to be rather busy, so... Uh, I thought I'd give you a ring, see what time you're shutting for tea. Oh, you shut already? Till seven. And you're on your way around. Good. OK, I'll see you in half a take then. Bye. Oh, There's a chop in the oven. A little low light. Fairly low, yeah. Would you like me no, to... No, uh... no, it doesn't matter. I'll have it when I'm ready. I see you've had your snaps and things out. I, I thought I'd tidy him up a little bit. It's been looking at old times, you know, seeing how things have changed. Oh, oh that was quick. Well, I said we were on the way. Hello. Hiya. Mm. Mm. Well, you're just in time for the washing up. Oh, give over you. I'm going back for a bath. My lady <laughs> is doing the skivvying, aren't you, love? Right, well, I thought we'd leave about eight and then maybe uh, tootle down Wimslow way for a drink, something like that. Yes, I think I can manage that. Good. See you asleep. Oh, my heck is asleep. I haven't done my tea yet. Have you had your tea, love? Oh, it's good. Are you stopping long? She's just stopping for an hour, aren't you, lovey? Yes. I don't know. I'm making Alf Roberts his fortune. Yeah, I'd say the heck with the late opening for sale. Well, would you bring me there bits of Bob, love? Thank you. Right, I'll right, right, see the pictures. Okay. Uh, now, that's my, my little baby. That's our beauty. Looks as though butter wouldn't melt in her in mouth. Because she weren't wearing corsets then. And, and that's her husband. He looks as if he swallowed a collar suit, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, don't ask me where she is, kid. We only called in for a quick half. And then I get all this aggro from Hilda. Well, I mean, I wasn't just going to stand there. But if she's not back soon, her state's going to be like bullets. Mind you, she could have got sat for a crib game, you know, or got into a big booze in school. Well, it just goes in the bin, that's all, because that's what my mother used to do. I mean, if you weren't in on time, it just went straight in the bin. Oh, you're getting a right flame in now, Bert. Uh, immersion on, is it? Hey, ten p an hour that costs, you know, madam. Skin flint. And another thing, somebody's been using my razor. I hate to think what on, but somebody's been using it. Hey, can hear you play across the street. Oh, you've decided to come home, have you? Well, so you sound like old Mother Riley. I am old Mother Riley, and I am fed up of folk coming and going whenever they choose. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I only went at Rovers because Vera were mithering and then she has her high wheel dragging the scoops off. And then that Marjorie Moss, you know where the dust stitching, she comes in and starts moaning about piece work. Well, there you are, my sweet. And if it is dried up, it is dried up. Oh, love, have you had yours? Of course I've had mine. Look at the time. To get to the library, Hunter. With these. Otherwise, I'll owe them a mint. Well, I don't know how you get through them all. You read more books than Ken Barlow, you do. Hey, have you done order? Yeah. Sunday bread bin. Hey, love. Listen, why don't you and me meet at the Rovers and then we can leave the coast clear for Vera? What have you told her Jack's coming? Have I? Have I? Because, like, I thought you'd have done that. Well, I haven't. But you've had all flaming day, haven't you? Oh, landed, have you then, booze artist? Hey, did you hear me blow? I hope you're kidding, madam. Hey, he's a lovely fellow, Bert, isn't he? Can't make flaming gravy, though. Hey, Vera, you're not t getting out again tonight, are you? Well, let's put it this way, kid. If there's a gorgeous blonde knocking them dead at nine o'clock tonight in Wellington, it won't be me, it'll just be another rumour. Well, it's uh, just that uh, Bert ran into Jack last night. What way? A three-ton truck? Well, he said he, uh, he might call round tonight. 
Ah, we'll have to shift this self, won't we? Dearie's not coming for his dirty washing, you know. Oh, I know why it's coming. It's coming to flannel. It's coming to grovel to me. Hmm, I don't know. Why, what do you mean? Bert reckons you don't seem all that bothered. Bothered in? Ha! If he sits on a nail, it takes him three days to go, oh! Now, listen, you could have got him all wrong, you know. Wrong him. He's as false as a barrel of monkeys. Well, he knows you've got Harry. I mean, he could have got somebody himself. Him? That big soft apeth. If he's left on his own long enough here, I don't see why not. I mean, after all, you married him. Ah, well, I'm a daft one, not I? Well, let's face it, love, there's plenty around, you know, looking for a soft apeth. I mean, look, you've got a nice house, fitted carpets, tumble dryer, central heated. I say there's many a one. Might fancy giving a feet under your table. <laughs> Sitting here all night, you know. Hey, it's all yours, kid. You can use my bath salts as well if you like. Thank you. I'm not missing Sarsky and Hutch. Hey, have a stiff to that scent Harry bought me. It's at side at Lofer. Flaming palaver. Switch that flipping radio off. Mm. Mm. Look what cats dragged in. Right. The fallen getting his cracks. Cracks? You, you come round here throwing your weight around. Do you want to come home? I'm not coming home to you to let Law down. Well, what do you want to do then? Bang him for a divorce, go off with this Harry fella? I'll tell you what, it knocks spots off you. He's all flaming brill dreaming teeth. Well, at least he laughs now and again. Well, it makes me teeth hurt when I laugh. You know it does since he had that new Teeth! Flaming. You're obsessed! They've been giving me hell. Oh, if it's not your teeth, it's your flaming corns. If it's not your corns, it's your indigestion playing you up. Ah, it's playing me up now. Very excited you and it starts playing me up. Ah, well, take some castor oil then. Listen, Vera, you come home tonight and kick this Harry bloke in a touch, or I'll have the locks changed and I'll start proceedings. I can see it is a problem wondering where to get married. Mind you, it's not one I've ever lost any sleep over. Because <laughs> it's like Mrs Beaton said in that cookery book, isn't it? First catch your hair. Oh, or was it your rabbit? <laughs> Oh, but it must be nice, wasn't it, to be Prince Charles and there's St Paul's beckoning. Mm. Mm. Now then, is there anything else, Mavis, for our lock up? Uh, did you get cocoa? Cocoa. Oh, yes, I like cocoa. I always find that it makes me dream a lot, cocoa, but they're very nice dreams. I mean, you know, they're very real, but I'll go to bed thinking about something and, uh, and I'll dream about it if I've had cocoa. Like now, I've just had this thought about Prince Charles. Well, I'll probably dream about Prince Charles. You know? Oh, you better not tell Alf. He'll be pouring tempe on brass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever dream about him? You know, that you've been invited and... Oh, that you're there on the actual day. No, oh, you mean all in white on the royal arm, so oh, to speak. no, I wouldn't dare dream that. <laughs> oh, no, my dreams don't go that far. Heaven <laughs> forbid. <laughs> oh, no, if they did, I'd think the Queen were glaring at me every time I lift oh. a postage stamp. <laughs> no, I just dream, you know, that uh, I'm there about... Three Three rows back, and everybody's talking about my hat. Uh, excuse me, love. Uh, has Ivy been in with the order? No, she hasn't. So, if you want it tomorrow. Oh, it's all right, love. I'll see where she is then. Right. <laughs> now then, is there anything else? Uh, yes, please. Some sweet shortbreads and oh, that. Oh, that's all. Must be nice, though, mustn't it, being royalty? I mean, they're always so sheltered, aren't they? I've always had this need to be sheltered myself. I suppose it's something to do with, well, the air raids, really, I think. You know, anything nasty, and I just want to close my eyes to it. Mm. There's plenty of nasty things going on round here, isn't there? Ooh, sins of the flesh, as we used to call them in Bible class. <laughs> so it's all right for some, I suppose. But who are we to say what people should do in their own homes, eh? Here's my order. Thank you. Oh, did you see Bert? I was just on my way. Well, I think we should all be on our way, really, don't you? I think Davey wants to lock up now. Well, I do have a date, so I thought I'd shut early, you know, without being away. At Mavis, could have just said something? To me? Either you at Flaming Bait and Slicer. Hey, 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 what's to do? I'll tell you what's to do. I am fed up of people passing remarks about goings on in my house. I am sure I've said nothing. Oh, no. No, I mean, you're as goody-goody as never was. Look, hang on, Ivy, you've got the wrong end of the stick here. It's you flaming tittle-tattles that have got the wrong end of the stick. And if I hear any more about it, they'll be hell to play, believe me. Every picture tells a story. You know what that is, don't you? The wages of sin. I've often wondered about the wages of sin. 
Do they include the cost of living? That's only one thing, they're not sacks. No stoppages, no stamps. They got paid for sinning, there'll be some rich folk round here. <laughs> Hello, love. Uh, half a bitter and a lager, please. Okay, I do hope. I bet. Uh, you having one, Vera, love? No, thanks. Well, it's a grand day for the big race, isn't it? What race? Yeah. The human race. I mean, you slid off quiet, no, didn't you? I come down, I've travelled that and you'd scarf it. Ah, well, I needed a drink. Listen, have you uh, settled up between you and Jack? I'm banging him for a divorce. Uh, a divorce? No, oh, love, you don't want to do that. I mean, uh, you know, uh, think. 20 years of marriage uh, down the drain, you know. Oh, look, Vera, you've put wind up him. Settle for that. Call it quits if he wants you back. Oh, he wants me back, all right. I mean, he's pleading. He's crawling on his hands and knees. He's wearing holes in your carpet. Well, there you are, then, love. Give him a break. I mean, you might drive him to drink, poor lad. Drink, eh? He's so flaming mean. Oh, aren't you being a bit hard on him, Vera? Mind you can chuck his the money about when it comes to crumpy. Jack? Oh, aye. Uh, Let any brassy blonde come swanning along with her hooks out. Well, has he said that, that he's gone? Oh, no, he's playing crafty, isn't he? He knows I won't go back to him if he's playing them games. And if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a backslider. Right, love, uh, let's sup up eh, and go for a walk while it's light. Round the allotment. Hiya. Oh. Hiya, Cole. It's not disturbing your beauty sleep, am I? No, I've got to get going anyway. Your record player's still on the blink. Oh, it's defeated me, mate. Let the dog see the rabbit. They find it's a loose connection. Got the old iron and the bad old days on the tools. Oh, it looks very technical. Yeah, but it could go beer. I wouldn't say no. Have you got time for one before no, you No, not really, love. Go on, form an audience while I do my magic Marconi oh, act. Oh, I wish I could. I best get going if I want to catch an early bus. The bloke starts moaning if I'm five minutes late. His overalls are off and he's gone. I mean, anybody could come in and get petrol. <laughs> he's right mustard, you know. Here's your sandwiches. Okay, love. Right, I'll see you about midnight, huh? Yeah. And, um, best of luck with a microchip. <laughs> when I find the place to kick it, I'll put a mark on. Okay. <laughs> I'll go, in it. It is these days, yeah. Oh, listen, I thought he was settled. Never seen out like it. Fussing about, keeping folk waiting. You worse than a bank manager. Yeah, well, I wear my clogs, wouldn't I? But they happen to be at the Menders. Titivating yourself. Titivating? I'd hardly say titivating, Uncle Albert. Tie and cuffs have always been taught to see that they're straight. Oh, it's all right when you work for the post office. Yeah, but I don't work for the post office. No, but your dad did. Yeah, but look, is there anything wrong with wanting to look properly dressed? Well, I suppose it does depend on where you're going. I mean, we're only going out for a drink. We're not going to a dance. Ah, yes, but we're going motoring, aren't we? I mean, we might land up in Cheshire. I still think an open neck might be better. No, you can't have an open neck with a suit. Oh. I don't know. It takes after his dad. You know what all this grumbling's about, don't you? What, trying to change your image? Well, you might be, yes, but not that old gentleman over there. Oh, no. It's because their beat is coming. Beat it? My daughter. Mm. She rang a short while ago to say, congratulations, Ken, on your engagement, and told me dad to expect me tomorrow. Did she say why? He didn't ask her, did he? Is she not welcome? Ooh. Oh, she's welcome to me. Shows at least somebody takes an interest. Oh. But it's very upsetting to be accused of something when you're not guilty. Mm. Especially when it's something you're not known for. I mean, am I known for gossip? No, well, I wouldn't say you'd ever get shot for it, lovey. <laughs> Hey, up here and not in. No, she left ten minutes since. Did she say where? Yeah. She just drank up and shot off. Oh, I say, hey, don't you think you owe this young lady an apology? Oh, do I? Look, I wasn't talking about you, Mrs. Tilsley. And if you don't believe me, you can go and ask Deidre. Oh, that's all right, Maeve. It's your word's good enough for us any time, isn't it, Mum? Yeah, well, I'm sorry I took you wrong. It's just that we're under a bit of pressure, you know what I mean? Yeah. I should get that prize for peacekeeping, me. Peacekeeping? I was just thinking how quiet it was in here. It shows I'm earning me money. <laughs> if you want to keep a bit of peace, come to our house. Spark flying next week, won't we? Why, what's happening next week? And Fred gets back with his bride, living in. And he won't like that for long. That's what I mean. Tin up to, isn't it? <laughs> Fill it up with your love. There you are, my love. What do you reckon? I don't know. Vera? Vera? Upstairs, Chuck. There's no sign in here. Any joy? Hey, she's not in the bathroom. 
And all that gear's gone. All that shampoo and all that stuff. Oh, Bert, dear, we hope. I think she's gone, love. I think she has finally scrammed. Oh, Yippee! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that you, Harvey, love? Oh, God, give me strength. Yes, it's us, love. Only, I was just wondering, are these my tights, good? Yeah, they look like yours. Only, I'm just getting a few things together, you know. Hey, you're, uh... You're not thinking of going, are you, Duck? Yeah, sorry and all that. I mean, you're being great. Oh, we're not pushing you, love. No, love, don't think we're pushing you. But uh, if you need a lift, you know, with your bags and no, all that. No, thanks out. a million, kid. No, I've got all I need. Anyway, I can always send it to drawers round for rest, can't I? Oh, you, you've, you've it really made your mind up then, have you, love? Well, I can't leave him on his sod, can I? I mean, it could go funny, you know. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, kid. Yes, Hey, another week of Bert's flaming gravy. Yes, <laughs> see you tomorrow, love. Yeah, no danger. Hold your breath and keep your fingers crossed, kid. <sighs> oh, I think we relax, love. Do you know what I said, Bert? I know, love. You didn't realise what peace and quiet was. I'll tell you what. I say that I'm glad we've got a family that knows how to behave, my love. <laughs> Oh, it's good to have music again. Main's leader gone at neutral. How's your beer? Fine. Could you go another? I'm tempted. Go on, you deserve it. They cost us pounds, I bet. Like I say, I'm tempted, but Sue's probably back. I could listen to that all night. Need something, I suppose, being on your own till what is it? Midnight? <laughs> Not that music's any real substitute. Well. Well, thanks a lot. And tell Sue I'm dead jealous. Jealous? The electrical expert on the premises. Oh, yeah, well, any time. <laughs> It'll probably be the telly next. Just give us a buzz. Tell Sue it's the box. I'll be round. Right. Good seeing you, then. enough for one. One's got him. Do you want them? Oh, thanks. <laughs> you should see your face. Have them. I was having you on. Oh, you can have them if you want. What, and risk you bursting into tears? Well, you know I like me Connie's first thing in the morning. Of course you do. And you. <laughs> hey, listen to this, love. A burglar who broke both legs while trying to escape from the police was told yesterday by a judge to pull himself together. <laughs> Gail? Hmm? Never mind. Nothing's up, is there? No, of course there ain't. Hey, it was a great day yesterday, wasn't it, with Sue and Colin? Fabulous. I think we all really got on well together, you know. Yeah. Friends and neighbours. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs Walker. Well, you're up soon, Mrs. Walker. Hey, you've had your bricky and all. I thought I'd get it first. You know, there is nothing nicer than a long, leisurely breakfast. Uh, especially in the morning the lady comes. No offence, mate. Well, there's no offence taken, Mrs. Walker, is there, Eunice? I uh, know, no. So, I will leave you to breakfast a deux. A what? Together, Fred. Together. Oh. Right, Mrs. G, come on, sit yourself down. Pardon? Mrs. G, oh, sit Mrs. yourself down. Yeah. Sit. Right, now then, let's see. What would Madam like for breakfast? Uh, let's see, we have uh, poached eggs, scrambled eggs, boiled eggs. What does the chef recommend? Oh, uh, kippers. <laughs> I'll have two well done. Get that, <laughs> David. You know what I like for my breakfast? A thin slice of toast and a cup of wheat tea. I want to know how a thin slices of toast and cups of wheat tea make all these good liqueurs. That's what I want to know. It's a woman's mystery, Freddy. No mystery to me. Freddy? <laughs> tea and toast coming up. Hey, Fred, you know what I think? What's that, look? I think Mrs Walker deliberately leaves us a clear field at mealtime so we can eat on our own. Oh, you reckon? I'm sure she'd be better eating with us, if just for the company. Definitely. Hey, I say, cut this, will you? There's one thing I'm not a nap hand at, is cutting thin slices of bread. Give it to <laughs> me. <laughs> Get off, you're insatiable, what are you? Insatiable, whatever that is. <laughs> we can't have it, though, can we? Can't have what? Mrs Walker eating on her own. Oh. Oh, no. How am I coping with the newlyweds? Well, 
Don't I cope with just about everything in life, Nellie, dear? <laughs> I do find their need to keep touching one another a little wearing. Rather like two airships colliding. <laughs> oh, dear. Privacy. Oh, I am insisting on that, especially at mealtimes. I mean, the sound of Fred chewing is hardly, well, palm court, is it? <laughs> then I suppose you have the same trouble. Well, Arthur. Right, well, I'll be off then. You can come with us if you like, you know. Deirdre won't mind. You don't have to tramp round the houses just for the ride. It's a lovely day. No. You know, Uncle Albert, you drive a Methodist to drink. I mean, are all these stands of yours against German cars, etc., really worth all the inconvenience to yourself? Yeah. There's such a thing as principle, you know. That's a word that seems to have gone out of fashion. Well, not entirely, no. It's just got a little more flexible, a little less rigid. You're not expected to blow your brains out for it anymore. No, but I don't think it was you this past year that should. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, I'll see you later then, Uncle Albert. Bye. Oh, hello. And where are you off to? Uh, well, do I have to be off anywhere? Yes, you do. You've just had a shave. You've still got some soap suds sticking to your ears. What is it that makes women ten times more observant than men? Better experience. Yeah. Well, we're just off to wrecky a couple of houses, dear Remy. Oh, nice for you. Mm, not bad. Better than sitting on a rusty nail. Bye. Has he told you where he's going? Oh. Well, I don't mean the Tsar of all the Russias. Well, there isn't one anymore. Don't be contrary just for the sake of it, Dad. I mean, Kenneth, he's only going looking at houses with her. He said. Well, has he no feeling for you, no consideration? Well, he's not on his own. Oh, he was keen enough to move out of here now with his, his child bride, because that's what she'll be. But there was no question of his moving when it suited him to live here, when it suited his pocket, oh no. Making a fresh start, is he? Well, good for him. It's about time. You can't mean that. I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't meant it. I think you're just being contrary again. Oh, well, please yourself. Well, where are you off to? Out. But come back here. I want to talk to you about your future. I can't keep coming round here. I've got my own home to look after. Oh. Gail! Hi. Well, I spotted you down the road. I couldn't find a place to park the car. I'm oh, sorry about that, Snag. I just thought... I know what you thought. You thought I was an easy touch. Oh, I did. Honest. I mean, what was I going to say? Don't tell Sue, eh? Hey, what's the point? It's right around to the bridge now, isn't it? Gail? I'll not tell Sue. Oh, yeah. What are you looking at? Yeah. Just wondering. Just wondering, Stanley. Must be painful by your mug. I'm just wondering whether my lack of female company has anything to do with the fact that I'm seen too often with you. I'm just thinking it might be the beast chasing off the beauty. Your lack of female company is due to the fact that you're an ugly, fat, dustbin man. Now to do with me. <laughs> That's a fair assessment of the situation, Stanley. <laughs> hey, Fred, why do you smell like a lemon? You, you look like a lemon and you smell like one and all. Well, uh, I've been using lemon flavoured shaving soap, haven't I? Well, I wouldn't if I were you. Someone's going to cut a slice off the top of your head and stick it in the gin and sonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very funny, yeah. <clears throat> what if I put an advert in the paper? <clears throat> Lady companion wanted for eligible bachelor. You might get a couple of female <laughs> shirts on, really, if you're lucky. Stanley, I'm the comic in this outfit, remember? No, I would. I'd get married if I had a good enough of it. If I need to cut down on the wear and tear. I mean, Sonia last night, a best friend tonight. <coughs> no joke. You'd still be doing that if you were married, you. Not every night, darling. <coughs> You've been a swine all your life, haven't you? Give or take a year or two, and I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. It's never done me any more harm yet. See you. Hey, mind you don't fall in that trough. Oh. Hello. How are you? Hello, Bubbles. What you got there? I thought Mrs Walker might fancy some fish and chips for her lunch. Oh, good thinking. I, uh, I'd have some myself, but I haven't got time really. Enough. I'll save you some if you like. No, you have them. Keep them curves curvy. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl be on price there, Lynch. A yes. pearl be on price. That's what a fella used to say about me, Fred. Till he went off with a girl called Ruby. <laughs> Back again, Mrs. Walker. I bet you think I'm never out of the house. I've brought you a surprise. Mm. 
Some chips for your lunch. I'm sorry, dear. I never eat boar fish and chips. Can you see a spot on that lapel? There. Yes, looks like a grease mark of some sort. Probably Mrs Ogden's thumb mark. She wears my clothes, you know, all the time. Parades about the bedroom, imagining she's the Duchess of Kent. Oh, it is annoying. I wanted to wear this suit tomorrow. I'll take it into work this afternoon, have it cleaned, and you have it back today. Would you? Of course I would. Oh, that's very kind. Look, Mrs Walker, I know Freddie and I are only here temporarily until we get our own pub. But there's no reason why we shouldn't operate as a little family, is there? You know, all mucking in together. Yeah, I'll put these on a plate, shall I? You sure you wouldn't like a chip butty? No, thank you, dear. Oh, dear. Hello, you're not eating or anything, are you? No. I've had this fantastic idea. Hello, super baby. You're going to chuckle for your Auntie Sue? <laughs> You know, I think he's beginning to fancy me. He'll be asking me out next. Oh, he's gorgeous, isn't he? Really gorgeous. <gasps> Did I say I'd had this fantastic idea? Yeah. Well, ask me what it is. What is it? Well, I think I've told you my mum and dad have got this caravan in the lakes, Ullswater. Have I told you? Yeah. Well, they're not using it this weekend, so I thought we could all go up there. Well, it's big enough for four, and Nick will be in his caricot, won't he? We could have a fantastic time. Colin's not all that keen, but who cares about him, eh? <laughs> what do you think? Well, we can't come. Why not? Well, Brian will be working, won't he? How can't he get off? Go sick or something? Oh, don't be daft. Oh, I'll have a word with him. Use me charm. <laughs> I'll use me charm on his boss, if you like. We can't come. <laughs> oh, come on, you've not tried yet. You're saying you can't before you've tried. Oh, you can be a bit of a misery sometimes, can't you, Gail? Look, I like the lakes as well, you know. I'd love to go for a weekend. There's nothing I'd like better. We haven't been away since we got married, but it's just not possible. Oh, come on, nothing's not possible. Hello. Just in time. What for? Supposing I asked you to come to the lakes with me for a dirty weekend. Mmm, you're on. See, it is possible. What's going on anyway? Well, I've had this fantastic idea. We all go up to my mum and dad's caravan this weekend. We can't go, can we, Brian? Well... We can't! I have to get time off work. It wouldn't be easy. Yeah, but you could try, couldn't you? Yeah, I'll see. Do better than that, or I won't play doctors and nurses with you anymore. <laughs> Bye, Nick. I'll take you, even if your silly mum and dad don't come. You've got till tonight to say yes. I mean it. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Hey, lover. I may just be able to get one night off, you know. Go Saturday and come back Sunday. you are not going. <laughs> Why not? I thought they'd been dead keen. There is something up, isn't there? You were in the mood this morning. All right, if you're one of your flaming moods. Well, if you must know. Yeah? It doesn't matter. Suit yourself. Well, if you must know. Colin tried it on with me last night. You what? He tried it on with me. He thought I was an easy touch. <laughs> A new house? Well, she must have a lot of pennies. Uncle Ken has. <laughs> oh, oh, house hunting with Ken Barlow. Hope Deirdre realises how lucky she is. Mm. Yeah, she does seem to have got it made, doesn't she? Oh, at long last. <laughs> Come on, love. Mummy well, we may be back by now. Uh, you don't fancy going for a drink tonight somewhere, do you, Emma? Um, it's all right. It looks like being a very nice night. Mm. One of the few. Yes. Mm. Well, I'll call for you about eight, eh? Mm. Perfect. Right. Come on, then, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, love. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. So, taking to drink now, are we? Oh, I only wish I could, but... Well, you know me, two sherries, and I'm not even anybody's. I mean, it just makes me a bit squiffy and slightly believed. <laughs> what pluses has life bestowed on you, Mavis, as against the uh, minuses of two Cypress sherries making you squiffy? Uh, well, I've got very nice feet. I've got nicely arched in steps and long, strong toes. That it? Yeah. Not a lot, is it? No. Oh. What good would thumping him do? It'll well, show him that he picked on the wrong bird when he picked on my wife. That's what it'll do, no danger. He already knows that. He'll make me feel better, too, for ramming his teeth down his flaming throat. That creep. He comes in here pretending to be your mate and tries out all for me wife. Hey, 
I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Don't tell me that wasn't his game. I'm sure it was. I mean, where did he get the idea from anyway? Why should he think he's even in, even in with the chance we're here? Well, he didn't get it from me. I'm not saying that. You seem to be suggesting oh, Don't it. talk daft. Anyway, that's not what's upsetting me at it's the moment. flaming upsetting me. I mean, I've got no guarantee that I won't thump him if I see him again. We were all getting on so well together. Our first friends on the estate. It was nice going out together. And he has to go and spoil it. Why do fellas always have to behave like that? I flame and don't. I'm not saying you. <sighs> Look, it could have been because you were alone all night. I mean, that may have given the idea. Look, love. Maybe you should jack my night job in. Well, then he really would have spoiled everything, wouldn't he? No, Brian, we still need the extra money. <sighs> well, I suppose we could forget about it and pretend nothing's happened. But if he ever came round again, forget it... Forget about him dead easy. I couldn't pretend we Sue. I couldn't listen to her going on about how wonderful her Colin was and all the time knowing what he was really like. It'd be like lying to her. So what do we do tonight, then? When she comes round about that lake strip? We'll have to lie tonight. We've no other choice. She's probably persuaded her Auntie Emily to take her to the park. Do you know she can twist her on the little finger, that one? Yeah, well, aren't all women skilled at that? You liked the house as well, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, of course I did. Hello, all on your own. Yes, and I have been since I got here this morning. Uncle Albert gone walkabout, has he? Don't ask me where he's gone. He went out soon after you, Kenneth. I've had his dinner ready since 12 o'clock. It'll be nearly a burnt offering. Ah, he's probably sitting somewhere in the sun talking over old times with one of his mates. Or even a lady friend. Oh, yes, he does have lady friends, you know. There's one who gives him an Eccles cake every time she meets me in the pension queue at the post office. Original, if not romantic. Well, I like Eccles cakes. Then I suggest you join Uncle Albert in the pension queue. Yeah, well, give me a couple of years, I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you wanted tea or coffee? Coffee, please. Right. Beatty? Nothing for me. You two seem very pleased with yourselves. Do we? Have you seen any houses you liked? Yes. Where? Well, there was one we particularly liked round Meadow Bottoms way. Meadow Bottoms? That's miles away. It's about five. Oh, I don't think Dad would like it out there. It's too isolated for him, too quiet. Yes, well, I don't think the question's going to arise, is it, whether your dad, uh, Uncle Albert, likes it or not? Oh, I see. What do you see? You have no intention of taking Dad with you, then? No. Well, that beats everything, that does. That beats everything. The reason we're not taking him with us is precisely because it is so far away. Oh, you're definitely going to buy this house, then? No, not definitely, but we have seen one that we like particularly, haven't we, Ken? Yes, it's ideal. It's just what we're looking for. It's modern, but with a lot of character. It's got a little stream running through the garden. And lovely views over the golf course. Mm, sounds ideal. I can understand you not wanting to risk upsetting the apple cart by having an old man under your feet. Oh, now, come on, Beatty, that's not fair. Uncle Albert would like a fish out of water there, and you know it. This is his home, where he's lived most of his life, and this is where his friends are. And I still say you're deserting him, after he's given you a home all these years for next to nothing. No wonder you can afford a new house, because you've lived here for next to nothing. Look, I think I've heard enough. Ken hasn't just lived here, you know. He's looked after Uncle Albert, which is more than you've ever done. Blimey, he'll never see you once in a blue moon. Do you know what I think? I think you're scared to death of being landed with him. That's what I think. Shh. What? I thought I heard something. I thought it might be Uncle Albert coming back. Now, look, BD, let's try to discuss this sensibly. I still say you're deserting him. Hello, love. Where's Mrs. Walker? She hasn't surfaced yet from an afternoon nap. Is it my imagination? Is she getting later and later? Well, she ain't getting any younger, is she? Exactly, Fred. So if we can make the autumn of her life a little easier, a little happier, just for a few weeks. I've got three pieces of silver hake, and what I thought of doing... What time is it? Well, quarter to six, Mrs. Walker. Goodness, it's not. <laughs> Doesn't time fly when you're immersed in a good book? <laughs> I'm reading Anna Karenin at the moment. Huh. I like a good mystery. Mm. I brought you a soup pack, good as new. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, yes, indeed. That is perfect. How much do I owe you? On the house, Mrs. Walker. Or in my case, on the firm. That's very kind of you. <laughs> I've got another little surprise for you as well. Oh. All will be revealed in, say, an hour. 
What surprise is this, Fred? Open the fog ears, Mr. Walker. Come in. Hello. Oh, where's my favourite man? In bed. Brian's there too. In bed? What have we interrupted, do you think, eh, Colin? I meant upstairs. Oh. Brian? Yeah? It's Sue and Colin, and we're here to get yes for an answer. Hi. It's all fixed up, isn't it? You've got the weekend off. And we're all going on a summer holiday. Well, a mini summer holiday anyway. Colin's already packed his cosy, haven't you, love? Little white number. You won't be able to keep your hands off him, Gail. Couldn't get off work. Sorry. Don't be silly. Cost you can. Anyone get off work if they want to. Tell him you, your pet duck's dead, anything. Couldn't get off. Course you can. You could if you really wanted to, couldn't you, Colin? Colin? I don't know. <gasps> Men. Wet lettuces, aren't they, Gail? I know. We'll ring his boss up, you and me, and we'll spin him such a tail he'll be in tears. There's something else as well. Well, my mum wants to come this weekend. Your mum can come any time. She wants to come this weekend. <sighs> you know what I think? I think you don't want to come to the lakes with us, that's what I think. But one thing's dead certain, you won't get asked again. Come on, Colin. Just got one thing to say to you, mate. You just keep out of my way. The flaming rhythms. Not really. I like Sue. So when it came down to it, we couldn't think of anywhere else to go. No, we even toyed with an idea of a walk on the canal bank, didn't we? <laughs> Jack and I used to have a favourite walk on summer evenings around Red House Farm. Oh, it was lovely. The air was like neck to the skylarks were singing. Of course, it's all disappeared now under the Hillmore Estate and they call that progress. Well, I meant to going out into the country somewhere to a little pub and just sitting outside watching, well, not very much go by. Ah, oh, but that's where you need fellas, you see. Fellas with cars. That's where they've got us. I mean, they're mobile and we're not. Oh, we're by our own car, won't we, Emily? I used to have a little Morris Thousand. Oh, no, I was thinking of something more sporty, like a Triumph TR7 or red metallic paint. Isn't she a fast cat, Emily? I'm surprised you go out with her. Well, it, it can be a bit hair-raising at times. Who on earth is doing that? Oh, well, uh, actually, it's, uh, it's Eunice, Mrs Walker. Well, that's a tool of the trade, not a sort of Indian love call. Ah, well, that's it, you see. She wants the two of us, you see. Two of us? Why? Well, it's the surprise, Mrs Walker. Oh, yes, the surprise. So, if you'd like to come through. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that I am living with a couple of overgrown children. What's going on? And to guess, it's Fred and Eunice cherishing Annie. Eunice seems to think she's like some sort of balmy old aunt, what needs looking after. Oh, dear. You can say that again. <laughs> what on earth? Eunice has made us all a nice meal, Mrs. Walker. So you sit there, Mrs. Walker, and you there, Fred, and me here. Silver heat, Mrs. Walker. Shall I see you? And cauliflower and new potatoes. Yes. So let's tuck in. Uh, Fred? Oh, uh, sorry, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. Now, isn't this better than eating on your own? Like I said to Fred this morning, a pleasure shared is a pleasure doubled. Oh, I've poached yours, Mrs. Walker. I thought you might prefer it like that. It's easier to digest. Thank you. Well, I'm off now, Dad. You'll be all right, won't you? Well, anyway, you know where I am if you want me. Bye. And the soap hour continues next on Plus with an unexpected party pooper in Emmerdale.